Oh my God. Okay. Okay. So. Hi guys, it's Sarah. Welcome back to another video here on my channel. I am super excited to get into the second half of season two of The Vampire Diaries today. But before we did, I just wanted to take a quick, quick second to just say thank you so much for all the love on the videos. This channel is growing very fast and I am so thankful. Um, I know I mentioned it last time, but just really, it means a lot. All of you that have already subscribed, those of you that have liked and commented on the videos, talking to you guys down below has been so fun. So please keep it up. I'm enjoying that part like so much, getting to just like interact with you guys and hear your thoughts and like commiserate on hatred of the characters. It's been so fun. Um, so thank you guys so much, as I said. If you have been enjoying the series and you're not yet subscribed, please go ahead and consider doing that. And I'm really glad that the phone situation seems to be working. Somebody mentioned that the buzzing, they could hear like little notifications going off. I hope that I fixed that. Um, we should be good this time, but just keep letting me know if anything sounds a little funky. Um, I do plan on at some point getting like a you know, a little fancier setup, but for now, this is what we're working with. I hope it is okay. Um, it is a little weird for me because like I'm, this is my whole phone, right? But to look at you, I have to look over here. I cannot look at the middle of my phone. If I look at the middle of my phone, look, I'm no longer looking at you. Isn't this weird? So that's a little trippy for me, but we're making it work. Anyway, we're here today to talk about the Vampire Diaries, so let's get into it. If you'll remember, we closed last episode um, with Jules breaking into the Salvatore house and biting Rose. So we open this episode with Jules waking up in the woods. Um, she's a human again, and she realizes that she's in a campground and she has mauled a group of hikers to death. So she doesn't really seem that upset about it. And she just starts like cleaning up the bodies and burning them and she steals some clothes. And then a cop car pulls up. And she starts to cry and she's like, oh, my friends, oh, an animal killed them. It was an animal, they're all dead. And the cop is like, hold on, hold on, I'll get help. And he goes to radio for help and she freaking knocks him over the head and takes that poor guy out too. So kill count for the wolves, guys, it's pretty high, okay? We give the vampires a bad reputation, but it seems like every wolf we've encountered so far just kind of goes feral when they turn and just kills people for funsies. So Elena and Stefan have like a cute little makeout session before school. And we learn that Stefan is planning to take Vervain like Catherine so he can build up a tolerance. So Stefan is now taking like small amounts of human blood and small amounts of Vervain. And the first sip for him, like he chokes and spits up and it's really violent when he drinks it. Uh, but we know that it gets better because Catherine can like sip it now and she's pretty much like totally tolerant to it like it doesn't really bother her at all anymore so we can look forward to that for Stefan even though Elena needs to go to school Damon is like can you please stay home instead and babysit my dying vampire friends with benefits human because Rose is just getting sicker and sicker and sicker and because Elena is like the mom figure of the group she's like yeah of course i don't need to go to school i'll watch rose and she just decides to babysit rose for the day while damon goes off trying to hopefully find a cure so tyler and caroline run into each other at school and he thanks her for helping him and they have like a a moment okay like he kind of there he's like thank you so much and she's like oh you're welcome and then he sort of like smolders at her a little bit and she's just like <laughs> And like gets flustered over Tyler. I was like, girl, what? you watched the man almost die one time and now you're all about it. But like, yeah, she is. So then Matt comes up and she's immediately like, oh my God, Matt, nothing was happening because something was happening. <laughs> and Matt's like, it's fine. I don't, it's, it's okay. If you say nothing's happening, nothing's happening. Um, but I think we had a miscommunication and I'm just confused because like I told you I loved you 
and you ran away. Like, what's going on? What's happening? And then he kisses her and she kind of has another freak out where she's like, Ooh, I can't tell him that I'm a vampire. He's not safe with me. Ah. And instead of like telling Maddie the truth, she just runs away again. Jules, just brave as all hell, walks up to the grill in the dead hiker's clothes and is like, hello, sheriff. Where's my friend, boyfriend, person that I know, Mason? And the sheriff's like, we have no idea. My bad. We, we got no leads. Sorry, Jules. Stefan goes to Rick to see if they can find anything else in Isabel's um, research because remember, she's like real smart and she was researching like all mythical creatures. So Rick had initially thought it was just vampires, but it's actually like pretty much everything they need. Isabel's research becomes like a catch-all for that. So Stefan's like, there's gotta be maybe something about wolf bites for Rose. And then maybe could we find out more info about Klaus for Elena? Like we need to just see everything Isabel has and figure out if there's anything that can help us. While Elena is watching Rose, um, it, Rose is kind of like slipping in and out of memories and she's very like feverish and it's, it's that kind of sickness. Like her mind is kind of going, it's basically like dementia for the vampires. Um, so they end up in Damon's room and Elena's like tucking her into bed and kind of like looking around the room and Rose is like, you've never been in his room before, have you? Like, it's not what you thought it would be. Mm, yeah, he's a good guy, I know. And Elena's just kind of like, okay, hush, dying vampire. Like, we don't need to unpack this right now. And Rose is kind of just like, you know, you're really lucky to have someone love you the way he loves you because I don't have that. And she admits that like, Trevor was like, brother seems like the wrong word, but like he was more of that, like a family figure. It was never romantic. So they loved each other like very much, but it was just never anything more than like, we need each other for survival and we need to take care of each other because we don't have anybody else in the world. And it never became more than that. Whereas like Damon and Stefan like are romantically and platonically and like friendship, like every kind of love they can feel for Elena, they do. And Rose is like, I've never had that. She's also very upset that Elena wants to like give up and just do what Elijah wants because she just thinks that she should be willing to fight for her own life, but also like for her own choices in her life. She's like, you, you should want more than this. You shouldn't want to just like give up and do what Elijah tells you to do. And she also, because of those memory slipping situations, she gets a little scary a couple times because she keeps thinking that Elena is Catherine. And there's a really bad moment where she like kind of fully attacks Elena a little bit, thinking like she's Catherine. Come, Elena like leaves the room. And when she comes back in, Rose has like slipped. And so she thinks that that's Catherine. And then she bounces back really quickly. And it says the most like heartbreaking line where she's like, I'm so sorry, Elena, please don't be scared of me. And oh, it's like a gut punch, guys. It hurts. I really love Rose. She is one of my favorite female characters. Oh. Damon confronts Jules and is basically like, look, I won't kill you if you tell me how to fix the wolf bite. And Jules is like, there is no cure, you big dumb idiot. And is the dementia setting in yet? Is she in like horrible burning, terrible pain? Does it feel like she wants to die? Good, go ahead and just stake her in the heart because that's the only way you just have to put her down. And Damon's just like, Wah. but like he can't do anything. So then they part ways. Rose has another slip where she like runs away from Elena. She ends up downstairs in the cellar, just going absolutely feral on the blood bags. And then when she turns to look at Elena, she thinks she's Catherine again. So she starts chasing Catherine through the house, wanting to kill her. And Elena has to do several things. She like opens the curtains so that Rose burns. Then she digs her hand into the wolf bite on her shoulder. So that hurts her. And then she finally, instead of you know, going outside where Rose can't get to her, she goes up into Stefan's room and like barricades the door and stands in front of the window with a knife. And Rose ends up like banging on the door a little bit. And then she starts going like, Elena, I'm sorry. I know it's not Catherine. I know it's you. I'm sorry, please help me. But Elena, for the first time in a while, is smart and decides to stay still and not let Rose in because she cannot be trusted and she's a feral vampire now. Matt tries to find out why Caroline ran away again and she's like, 
uh, well, I love you too, Matt. And he's like, okay, I'm more confused than I ever was. And she just vamp runs away from him again. So they're not having good communication in their relationship. It's not looking good for Maddie and Caroline. Elena decides that she's been smart for long enough. So she unbarricades the door and goes back into the house trying to find Rose. Instead, she finds the front door open and Damon, who's like, what happened? And Rose is like, or uh, wow. Elena's like, she's crazy now. And I think she got out. And Damon's like, awesome. I gave you one job. Speaking of Rose, she wanders out into like a football game at the high school and ends up puking her guts out because she's to that point of the sickness. And then she eats a janitor. I think she does say she's sorry before she does it, but yeah, she eats the janitor. And then uh, the sheriff, you know, they find the body. So now the sheriff's looking for another vampire and she's confused because she thinks they keep killing all the vampires and they just keep finding more. So she calls Damon and Damon has Elena with him. So he's like, you stay with me. We've got to go find Rose. Rose attacks a couple getting into their car and she eats the boyfriend first. And the, there's something about this rewatch. Maybe it's the fact that like I'm engaged this time or the wedding is like looming closer, but I would just lose my mind in a situation like this. Are you kidding me? You leave the football game because the janitor has a heart attack. You go to get into your vehicle and your boyfriend just gets snatched and eaten. No, but thankfully in this case, the girl also gets eaten. So they don't have to live without each other. All I'm saying is I would lose my mind and it happens way too often and way too casually in this show. Okay, couples just stay getting wrecked constantly. Damon and Elena find Rose and he gets her to snap out of the feral state. So she kind of comes back to herself and then she just starts crying and like begging for it to be over because she killed people and she doesn't kill people anymore. So she feels terrible. And also she scared Elena and Elena was her friend. So she's just devastated that this is happening to her. I think they do do a really good job of showing the way the sickness happens, like especially in Rose, she gets like a really bad case of the dementia. And it does kind of elicit those same feelings of like when you're watching a movie and somebody has Alzheimer's and you're kind of seeing that like slip of progression where it's like sometimes they know what's happening to them and sometimes they don't. And it's scary. It They do a good job of like giving her all those feelings. Um, and it's definitely like really heartbreaking for Elena and Damon to like watch her going through this in the middle of the school parking lot. When they get Rose home, she has another quiet moment with Elena where she tells her that like Rose and Damon are really similar because the second they like start to care about someone, they get really scared and they either run away from it or like lash out. And then she tells Elena to please fight against her fate and just like stay strong and like trust her friends. And then she has just like this horrible, like convulsing pain attack. And Damon just like shoes Elena out of the room to keep her safe and gets into bed with Rose and just like holds her through the pain. And she's like begging him to make it stop. It's, I'm telling you guys, it's a very intense sequence of scenes. It's very sad. Tyler goes to Caroline to tell her that he doesn't understand why she would help him when she knew that a vampire bite could kill werewolves. I can't remember if I said that, but when they have their cute moment in the beginning and she gets flustered by him, she kind of immediately ruins it by being like, also, by the way, werewolf bites can kill vampires. And before he can do anything, Matt shows up. I think I forgot to tell you guys that. So I'm telling you now, but that's why he comes to see her again, because he's like, um, why did you do that? You shouldn't have risked your life for me. And she's like, you needed my help. Like I, I had to help you. And he's like, I don't understand you, Caroline. And then he kisses her. And y'all, it's not like he kisses her only. Okay. He, they're like, she's leaning against the door. So he like kisses her and then they pull away from each other and then they kiss each other again. And then she pushes him away and she's like, whoa, 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 we can't be doing that. And he's like, oh, I'm so sorry. I thought, and she's like, no, everyone just needs to stop kissing me. And then she goes inside. <laughs> oh my God. Okay. Okay. So Damon and Rose are in bed. Damon does a head dive on her where he pulls forward one of her favorite memories so that she can be comfortable in her own head for a minute. 
and it's a memory of her like from her childhood not I say childhood from her like young adult life when she was probably still a human and they're like she's running through a field in this like beautiful dress and her hair's all long and curled and there's horses in the field with her and she's so excited to like be there and like smell the fresh air and be surrounded by all the nature and then Damon's there and he's in regular clothes and she's like oh my gosh I never thought I'd see this place again like will you sit with me for a little bit I just want to enjoy the fresh air and he's like for a while yeah so she like leans on his side and they have like a cute little like watching the the scenery it's it's beautiful it's like a mountainside hill and it's fall so it's just like perfect then we kind of cut back to them sitting in bed so we know for sure that like Damon is kind of orchestrating this memory but also Rose is now comfortable and like at peace and she's no longer like convulsing or any of that we go back to the memory and Rose asks him if he thinks that she'll see her family again and he's like I think you'll see whoever you want to see I'm gonna get emotional no ah! He says, I think you'll see whoever you want to see. Then we cut to Damon picking up a steak. We go back. Rose is like, she jumps up from the ground and she's like, I'll race you to the trees. Like, I bet I can beat you. And he's like, okay, you go ahead on three. And then they count down. And on the three, he stakes Rose in the heart and she dies. Uh, but it's so sweet guys it's so sweet so we go back to him like he's like crying while he holds her and it oh my god it's such a moment it's such a good moment it's one of my favorite scenes this is like one of the most like gentle vampire deaths we see and it is all Damon's orchestration like he does it that way for her I just, guys, their chemistry is friends, okay? I'm telling you, they had to get rid of her because they knew we were all going to be like, he doesn't have to be with Elena. He could be with Rose. That could work out. And they knew we would want it. And they were like, that's not how we're going to write this show. We have to get rid of the enemy. And they just offed Rose. <sighs> she does not come back. I'm sorry, but it, oh man, it gets me every time. The way she's like, I want to enjoy the fresh air. Will you enjoy it with me? It's just, oh, it's so cute. And it hurts me every time. Damon takes Rose's body to the sheriff to be like, I killed your vampire. Yay. Uh, but then he's like, I'll bury her. Like, I'll take care of the body. So we know that like wherever he's going to take Rose, he's going to like give her like a respectful burial, which is again, very sweet. Jules meets up with Tyler at the grill and she basically is like, I know you're a werewolf because I'm a werewolf. I can help you. They killed your uncle. Mason's dead. And Tyler's like, what do you mean they? Who killed him? And she's like, your little blonde vampire. That's who. And he's like, what? Caroline never would have done that. And she's like, yeah, she did with the help of her other friends. And Tyler's like, but she's the only vampire in town. And then Jules has to explain that like, no, they've all been lying to him. So really, we could have saved a lot of drama here if Damon wouldn't have been so freaking crazy about Caroline talking to Tyler and they would have just trusted him because now he's confused and conflicted and he doesn't know who's telling the truth. Elena goes to check on Damon and he's basically just like, uh, leave me alone. I don't want to talk about it. And she's like, no, you have to, you know, feel this. We have to talk through it. I'm your friend. Let me help you. And he's got his like wild, crazy Damon eyes, which mean like, I'm going to kill somebody immediately. And he like lashes out at her and he's like, what do you want to know? You want to know that I feel guilty? I do. It should have been me. They were after me. And yet now Rose is dead. And she's like, I know Damon. And she gives him a hug and he like kind of is like, don't touch me. But then he cries and he feels the emotions. And you'd think that'd be a turning point and it kind of is, but like we're gonna have to deal with crazy Damon for a little while now. So buckle up. Stefan's waiting for Elena when she gets home. And they have a moment where he's like, I'm sorry I called Isabel. And she's like, I already knew you did that. And then he drops another bomb, which is that he brought freaking John home to have a little chat. Nice move, Stefan. 
Damon does his whole fake death in the road situation and this poor girl pulls over and tries to help him. He very quickly like shows that he's actually crazy and starts like threatening her and then he uses compulsion on her to get her to stand still and it seems like maybe he's just gonna talk to her and he basically is like I'm having a really hard time. I don't know what to do because the way that I normally handle my emotions is gonna upset her and I don't wanna upset her. I wanna be the person she wants me to be, but I can't be that person because if I'm that person, then I'm not myself. And who am I really underneath all this pain? I don't wanna unpack that. And the poor girl, whose name is Jessica, by the way, is just like, please don't kill me. Um, we can figure this out. And he's like, I don't think we can, Jessica, because I'm a monster and I need to eat you. And she's like, you could do anything but that, please. And he's like, mm, okay, okay, yeah, you're right. Go ahead, go ahead, go home. She runs, and before she can get to her car, he grabs and eats her. End of episode 12. So episode 13 opens with uh, Caroline leaving the house and Tyler showing up to talk to her. And she's initially like, oh my God, Tyler, hi. We really need to talk about that kiss because you can't be doing that. Like I'm still with Matt. And Tyler's like, <laughs> right. Did you kill my uncle Mason? Do you know who killed him? Why are you lying to me about everything? I know the truth now, Caroline, and you're a lying liar. And Caroline has to admit that like, yeah, she didn't kill Mason, but she knows who did. And she knew the whole time that he was dead. So the whole time she's been helping Tyler, she's known Mason was dead. That devastates him because they'd gotten so close and they'd bonded. And now it kind of feels like all of that was fake to him. So in this period of time, I understand where Tyler's coming from because that would be like a really, really big betrayal. And I think that they don't cut him enough slack for that because like his whole life got turned upside down and he thought he could trust Caroline. So she came to him in like his most vulnerable time and told him like, oh, it's okay, I understand. Look, I'm a vampire, we can get through it together. And then was lying the whole time. That would be horrible. Especially when your dad and uncle have both just died and you can't tell your mom cause she's not gonna believe you and she's on the council that wants to kill things like you. So, I get where he's coming from, okay? His anger also flares up really bad here and he like, he kind of like starts to attack Caroline. I think he like growls at her or something. Uh, the wolf powers are kind of weird cause it's like they're always just like slightly too strong. Sometimes their eyes flash and their teeth get weird, but then they don't, they can't fully turn into wolves. So yeah, he does that and then she's like, oh no, Tyler, and he leaves. He like backs off and leaves. We get a Damon in the shower scene followed quickly by a Damon in a towel scene while he like mourns or thinks about or broods, broods, he's brooding. He broods over the fact that he killed Jessica because like, yeah, that was a mistake. He shouldn't have done that. When will he get his emotions under control? Stay tuned. Elena confronts John in the kitchen about why he's back, but he's super evasive and just like doesn't want to give her a real answer. And then Jenna comes in with Rick and things get real messy because John has like a power trip moment where he's like, I'm the head of the household and Elena's bio dad. And I don't think Rick should be in the house naked. Okay, Jenna, that's not like good things for a guardian to do. It's not very guardian-like of you. And Jenna's like, you can go to hell, John. We literally all hate you. But like John owns the house. So it is a little bit of a problem. Damon is equally mad that Stefan brought John home, uh, but Stefan insists that like the only reason why he did it is because John and Isabel know about the whole Klaus sacrifice situation. And Stefan's like, he's gonna be able to help us save Elena. He just won't tell me how yet, but he is going to be able to do it. And Damon's like, since when do we trust this lying piece of garbage. Caroline is absolutely terrified that now that Tyler is kind of going all crazy werewolf, Damon's gonna kill her and Tyler. And Stefan's like, ooh, yeah, he might because he's a little unhinged right now after Rose's death. So I'll help you protect Tyler because he's gonna need it. 
Jules goes again to Tyler and is like, look, I'm bound by an honor code to help you. We're meant to be one big pack. Please let me help you. It would be like everything I'm meant to do. And it, they're, they're, it's kind of, I don't know. It's definitely like the pack mentality. I was going to say it's kind of weird. It's really not though. It's just like very different from the vampire like sire bond that we'll learn about later. That one is very much like I made you and I control you. And the wolf one, we don't get a lot of alpha talk in the beginning. So it's more so just like they're meant to like help protect each other. So that's what Jules is saying to him. And Tyler takes her up on it because he's all alone and he doesn't know who else to turn to. And now he's fighting with Caroline. So we can't even have that friendship anymore. Damon says he just wants to have a nice little friendly chat with John. But Elena is like, absolutely not. I've never trusted you less in my life. I'm going with you so that you don't kill him. After talking to Tyler, Jules runs off to the woods and meets up with a guy named Brady. He's there to get revenge on Mason's death and he wants to just like burn all the vampires. And she is genuinely more focused on helping Tyler. And she's like, look, I know you want revenge, but we're outnumbered. We just need to get the kid and go. And Brady's like, hmm. The mayor's wife tells John that Damon is now head of the council and he needs to get over it. That's how things are. And then Jeremy very quickly runs into John and is like, look, homie, you can't be back here and be all anti-vampire because things are different now and these guys are our friends. So back off. Dr. Martin goes to Bonnie and is basically like, I'm sorry that Luca and I lied to you, um, but Elijah is a really good man and he's gonna keep his word. Like as long as Elena does what she says she's gonna do, Elijah's gonna do what he says and he's gonna protect her friends and keep everybody safe. But Bonnie has like zero trust for the Martins now, so she just thinks he's lying completely. Stefan goes to Tyler to try to talk to him about everything and he genuinely just wants to talk to him. He's not like Damon. He doesn't want to like hurt Tyler at all. But Tyler freaks out because he thinks that Stefan and Damon killed Mason, which they did. And he doesn't understand like why that all happened. So he ends up just like being afraid of Stefan and it takes a little bit of time for Stefan to get him calmed down enough to be able to tell him everything. And he's basically like, look, dude, I don't think the wolves and the vampires need to be fighting. I think we can coexist. I came back here to live my life. You are here living your life. There's no reason why we can't all coexist. And Tyler just doesn't believe him. So he panics and answers his phone when it rings and is like, help me, Stefan, and then hangs up. And Stefan's like, who was that, Tyler? And we hard cut to Jules in the woods with Brady. So that's who just found out that Tyler's in trouble. And now it becomes a whole situation. John tells Damon that the reason why he doesn't want to tell any of the vampires what's going on, i.e. like Stefan and Damon, why he won't tell them the plan. It's basically because Elijah can compel other vampires. So he's like, how do I know I can trust you? Like, how do I know that Elijah hasn't just done something to you and you're just pretending to be normal and Damon's like dude we're taking Vervain like he can't compel us and John's like mm, okay but I don't really believe you you're gonna have to prove yourself to me but he doesn't tell him how so that's not helpful John. Matt runs into Caroline and he's like hey I really want to talk to you I really want to figure out what's going on what's going wrong like what this is. Can we please talk after work? And she's like, yes, absolutely. That sounds like a great plan. I will see you after work. And then immediately she is kidnapped by Brady and Jules and it's really bad. Okay. They put a wooden bullet right here and it's terrible. It, it's such a scene. Okay. And then they kidnap her and then she wakes up in a cage in horrible pain because there's a wooden bullet and she has to pull it out. Ew. It's so <laughs> gross. <laughs> the way the vampire stuff works with that. It's like if they get hit with a bullet, it will like work its way out slightly. And then they usually have to like dig in and like pull it out. So like, 
Are you joking? That's disgusting. Stefan and Tyler are still trying to have their like, can we be friends? Can we trust each other conversation? And it's not going well. And then Stefan gets a call from Caroline, except it's not Caroline, it's Jules. And she's like, we kidnapped your friend and we're gonna kill her. And Stefan and Tyler are like, what do you mean kill her? So then Tyler's like, I can't believe they're doing this. I don't want Caroline to die. What did you expect, Tyler? What did you think was gonna happen? Jenna introduces Damon to Andy Starr, who is the new news anchor lady. We've seen her on TV, I think at least once on this episode. Um, she'll be important later, but for now, Damon just like brushes her off and is like, I don't have time for this, Jenna. No girls for me. Damon and Elena jointly find out about what's happened with Tyler, Caroline, everything. Um, and he flips and he's like, the wolf is dead. And she's like, don't kill him. This is Tyler. We cannot kill our friends, Damon. And he has this amazing line where he's like, stop assuming I'll play the good guy just because it's you that's asking me to do it. And then she hits him with, be the better man, Damon. John interrupts them. I think this is happening in the bathroom. If I remember correctly, they're like in the grill bathroom. And so John interrupts and is like, what's going on here? And Damon gives like a quick rundown and he's like, you stay with her and keep her safe. And she tries to like go around John and John's like, ah, ah, ah. what's going on? And keeps her in place. So Damon runs off and Elena stays with John. Brady is torturing Caroline. And it is not good. And it's mostly because she's a vampire and he's mean. It really has nothing to do with like what she does or doesn't do. He just hates all vampires. Well, that's kind of a running theme. Some of the characters just hate each other because they're opposite species. Stefan goes to the trailer to try to trade Caroline for Tyler. Um, and Jules is basically like, yeah, we're not doing that. And she's with us now we're not giving her back and then Damon shows up and they try to like jointly attack Jules and they're like we have you outnumbered two to one and she's like "Ooh, are we two to one though and then she whistles and like a big old group of wolves just like start coming out of the woods they get into a fight and Damon just starts ripping out hearts left and right just like dead wolf dead wolf dead wolf dead wolf it's not an even fight by any means Tyler goes into the trailer to get Caroline, but he hesitates before opening the cage. Excuse me? Stefan almost gets stabbed twice and then he does get staked in the back, uh, but then they pull the stake out and he just kind of falls over. So like, he's probably fine. Don't be too concerned. Tyler gets Caroline out, but then the boys end up getting beaten and Jules grabs Caroline and is gonna like put her back in the trailer and Tyler is too freaked out to do anything even though he knows what they were doing to her inside the cage. But he's too scared to like fight back and say, no, don't touch her. So Brady goes to stake Damon on the ground, but then Dr. Martin shows up and uses the aneurysm spell on all the wolves. So all the wolves drop and then Damon, Stefan and Caroline are able to get away. Tyler ends up staying and he doesn't get knocked out and Dr. Martin is basically like tell the wolves to leave town or they're gonna get killed. Caroline has like severe PTSD after this happening and she's really upset but she's kind of like trying to control herself and Stefan comforts her a little bit and he's like do you need anything can I do anything and she's like no I just want to shower and go to bed I just I need to go to bed I'll be fine and he's like okay and he leaves it's a very sweet scene I their friendship guys I'm telling you they're very cute as friends John goes to the Salvatore house to talk to Damon after you know everything's happened and he's basically like you and Stefan would literally die to save Elena that's enough proof for me. I We're on the same page here about protecting her. So he gives Damon a bottle of ash and a silver dagger. And he's basically like, this is how you kill an original. The ash from this tree is from the time period that they're from all those thousands of years ago. And all you do is dip the dagger into the ash and then you stab them in the heart and that's how you kill them. He also says that Isabel is currently working on finding a way to keep Klaus from ever being able to come back into town to get Elena. So they're all working for the same goal, according to John. Anyone else remember how Caroline was supposed to meet Matt after work? So he finishes work and calls her and he's like, hey, where are you? 
um, I thought we were gonna meet up, is everything okay? And she's like, oh my gosh, yeah, I'm sorry. Um, Bonnie needed me, like Bonnie's having a friend emergency and I just I had to help Bonnie. And he's like, oh, okay. So you're with Bonnie right now? And she's like, yeah, she really needed me. And then we cut to Matt seeing Bonnie in the grill with Jeremy. So he knows she's lying. That's not gonna end well, guys. Tyler shows up to apologize to Caroline. And he's basically like, um, you know, I didn't know who to trust. I didn't know what to do. And Caroline's like, well, I lied to protect everybody, Tyler. Like, that's the only reason why I lied. And he's like, okay, well, I just didn't, I didn't know any of that. And she's like, well, you know what I know? I know that you just stood there and you didn't try to stop them hurting me, Tyler. And that's not what friends do. And he's like, I'm sorry. And she's like, we're not friends anymore, Tyler. Go away. Which, again, I know that probably they should have had this conversation a little later, but I think it's a little harsh of her to just completely denounce him because a lot of times in the show, people forget that like, okay, Caroline was lying to protect her friends, but in doing that, Tyler's uncle died. So that's Tyler's family that was taken from him. He's allowed to be upset. And then nobody tries to tell him why that needed to happen. Nobody even like attempted to explain it to him and he's supposed to just like be okay with it. So I kind of get where he's coming from, okay? That's what I was saying before. And I think Caroline's a little harsh. Like she has every right to be upset, but also he was acting off of instincts because he didn't know what was going on because he hadn't been given the whole story. John gives Elena a bracelet from her real mom, Miranda, and is basically like, I know I'm not your dad. I know I'm nothing to you, but when your parents died, I lost my brother and I lost my family too. And then I couldn't be with any of you because none of you like me and I'll protect this family always. And I love you guys. Stefan shows up and she immediately is like, I don't even believe him. I don't believe him at all. Like he's nothing to me, man. So she's not even gonna give John a chance. Tyler goes to the trailer to see Brady and Jules and he apologizes for what happened to their friends. And he's like, look, is it always like this? Like, is this really what my life's gonna be like now? And they both kind of laugh it off and they're like, no, dude, like you just live in vampire town. Like we were trying to tell you, there's a place where like we can be together and we can be a pack and we can enjoy life on our own. We don't have to be surrounded by them all the time. They're the reason why stuff sucks. And then he says that like Mason was in town looking for the moonstone. He like lets that slip and Brady just freaks out and is like the moonstone. And Jules is like, I swear I had no idea. And Brady's like, tell me everything you know, Tyler. Caroline opens the door again to see Stefan. And she's like, Stefan, I told you I'm fine. I don't need anything. And he's like, oh, I know you don't need me. That's why I called him back up. And then he steps aside and Bonnie and Elena come in and they're like, we're gonna do a sleepover. Like, it's gonna be so fun. And Caroline starts crying and it's really sweet. And we get to see the three of them all happy together, which is always nice. We hard cut to Damon in a bubble bath with Andy. That's right, the lady from the grill that Jenna introduced him to. And she's like, I can't believe you called me. And he's like, uh-huh, yeah, I needed a distraction. And she's like, oh, haha, <laughs> okay. And then, he just launches into, yeah, when I'm upset, I do bad things. And she's like, what kind of bad things? And he's like, I kill people. And she rightfully starts to freak out. So he uses compulsion on her and he's like, don't panic. You're safe with me. Relax. So she relaxes and she's like, why do you, why do you kill people? That is not a normal reaction that most people have. And you basically the scene unfolds and we realize that Damon called Andy over because he needs a friend and he's too afraid to go to Elena about it because that's who he's trying to hide all of this badness from. And he's like, she wants me to be a better man, but then if I'm that person, I'm not myself anymore. And Andy's like, well, maybe love is changing you. And Damon's like, well, we don't have time to unpack all of that right now. And he just bites her and that's the end of that scene. John goes to see Catherine in the tomb. He says that Isabel sent him because she could not come because she's working on other parts of the plan. And Catherine's like, I want out of this tomb, John. And he's like, I know, I'm already working on it.
episode 14, the remaining wolves regroup together and they figure out that Catherine must have been using Mason to break the curse on the Moonstone. Brady like loses his mind and is like, that absolutely cannot happen. Stefan calls Elena and is like, wake up. I know you had a crazy wild sleep overnight with the girls, but I want to get you out of town so that we can avoid John. Cause I know you don't want to be anywhere near him. And it must be a weekend cause you don't have school, I guess. There's no, I really wish, guys, it would probably get absolutely insane, but I wish somewhere on the screen of the Vampire Diaries, it just said like the day of the week because the timelines never make any sense. Sometimes it feels like they're at school constantly and then sometimes it feels like they never go to school and we just have, we're just left in the ether of like, what day is it? Does anyone know what time of the year we're at? If it's not homecoming or Halloween or Christmas, I. There's nothing to orient you in the spring seasons. They don't really celebrate Easter, okay? I think Founders Day happens in the spring, but I don't know, because it's not like there's a calendar. Andy leaves for work from the Salvatore house, and Damon compels her to, like, be falling for him really hard. And she already liked him, but this, like, just adds to it so that she's, like, really in love with him and, like, selling the relationship situation. So he's probably up to something there, but we don't know what. Rick shows up and Damon talks to him about the dagger and the ash. They're both really skeptical about it because John told them. So it always feels like John could be lying because normally John is. So then Damon is like, well, I'm gonna go to this episode's historical gathering of the Society of Founding People. And I'm gonna go talk to Elijah because if you'll remember, um, Elijah is pretending to be like a traveling historical writer visiting the town and the founding families are just eating it up because they love talking about themselves. So Damon's like, I'm gonna go talk to him at this party thing. The wolves tell Tyler that whoever breaks the sun and moon curse first gets the better end of the deal. So if the vampires break it, then that means they can walk in the day. If the wolves break it, that means they can decide when they turn and like turn on will, which means that they could never turn at all. And Jules really like ups that for Tyler. She's like, yeah, you know how you're so scared of this? Like, if you go ahead and help us, you just never have to turn again, Tyler. You can just keep that part of you hidden away forever. So of course he's like, uh, heck yeah, that sounds great because we know he's terrified of turning and he's really struggling with it. So that was like full manipulation on their part. And then Brady's like, yeah, so we need a couple things. And one of the most important things is the doppelganger. And he like shows a picture of Catherine. And that's when Tyler's like, oh, you mean Elena? And they're like, you know her? And he's like, yeah, I grew up with her. I've known her my whole life. So yikes, Tyler, you're gonna just give Elena over to the enemy. Caroline and Bonnie run into Matt at the grill and she obviously doesn't know that he knew she was lying about Bonnie. So he's just like super annoyed with her and he's like, Caroline, I'm working, leave me alone. And she's like, what's wrong? What's going on? Are you okay? Like, I'm sorry about last night. And he's like, yeah, you mean when you lied to me? Like, I know you weren't with Bonnie, girl. You just stay lying to me and I'm over it. I told you I loved you. That should have been enough and I'm not not gonna do this anymore and then Tyler shows up and everything just looks even worse and Matt like Caroline kind of like runs off and then Matt confronts Tyler and is like look if you like her just get with her already man and quit lying to me about it because I'm sick of everyone pretending like I can't see what's going on and he's like not entirely wrong because Tyler does like Caroline and there's definitely like an underlying Caroline could probably like Tyler, but they're not actually together yet. Stefan takes Elena to her family's cabin by the lake and it's really cute. He's planning on just like spending the weekend there with her and getting her away from John and just enjoying the time. And then she gets a text from Caroline and she's like, oh my God, hold on, something's wrong. And when she tells Caroline like, hey, we're going to the cabin, like, is everything okay? Caroline's like, oh yeah, everything's fine. Except it's not Caroline, it's Tyler. So now the wolves know where Elena's going and they go after her. So then back at the cabin, Elena goes inside and Stefan goes in to come after her and he can't get in. And she's like, come on, what are you doing? And he's like, well, you know, I would, but I'm stuck. And she's like, oh my God, Stefan, I don't own the house. Uncle John owns the house. How could we have forgotten about that? And he's like, are you kidding me? And she's like, yes. I am kidding, Stefan, come inside. And then they start making out. Woo. 
at the historical function thing, uh, Damon tries to uh, interrogate Elijah and it goes terribly because Elijah is a scary, 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 very powerful, very intense man. But then they both also are very eyebrow heavy. So it's just a lot of smoldering at each other across the screen. And then when Damon tries to be intimidating, Elijah just like bodies him and is like, I don't know who you think you're dealing with, but I will end you. So stay down, okay? Leave me alone. Honey, Jeremy, and Caroline kind of make a plan to get information out of Luca. So she flirts with him at the grill and he kind of trusts her and is like, oh, I'm glad you're accepting our apology. Like I am sorry about what happened. And she's like, yeah, I know, I know. Here's a coffee. I made you a coffee. And she, he takes it and then, um, immediately passes out at the grill in broad daylight. Nobody notices and Jeremy kind of takes him away and they go uh, back to the house. We have a tail, look at that ring tail, look at that. This is Zach, by the way. I don't know if you guys, hold on. Let's just, there he is, that's Zachy boy. At the cabin, Elena and Stefan bond over like what could happen with their life together and all of that and it's a little too much for her. He's like ready to talk about it and like wants to talk about it with her and kind of plan and it's just too much. So she is like, no, I don't wanna talk about that right now. Let's just enjoy the water. So they just kind of cuddle by the water. Um, and then John goes to Rick and is like, I think it's disgusting the way you parade around the house with Jenna, like you own the place. Give me back my ring, Rick. Never forget that Elena Gilbert is not like other girls, so she can't cook, but it doesn't matter because Stefan can, all right? Stefan's making dinner, and then they end up kissing in her parents' room. I think she like wanders in to like look for something, and then she finds like a bottle of her mom's perfume. I, I don't know, they, they end up in her parents' room, and then they end up kissing on the wall. And she's like, oh my God, not in my parents' room. And then he like touches the wall, and then he like knocks on the wall, and she's like, what is it? And he's like, this is hollow. And he rips open to reveal like a hidden room, and it's loaded with like vampire hunting weapons and journals. So that's a fun family secret they've just uncovered. And he starts putting Luca into a trance so that they can like ask him questions without him being able to fight back. And she also lights the candles again with her mind, which is my favorite thing she does. Rick and Damon start plotting how they might be able to kill Elijah. And then the wolves show up and attack them. They kill Rick, but they don't know about Rick's ring. So they just leave him behind and he's gonna wake up and then they kidnap Damon. Brady tries to get Tyler excited to go hunting for Elena, and he's like, you know, we have to do this. We deserve to be free. If you stand in my way, I'm gonna take you out too. And Tyler agrees and goes along with everything because he's like really struggling to like find his place. And at this point, he feels like he pushed Caroline so far that she's never gonna forgive him again. So if he doesn't go with the wolves, he'll have nobody. John gets in a fight with Jenna about the fact that she let Elena go off with Steph into the cabin, and she's like, I don't blame her for wanting to get away from you John and he's like you know you're just like the queen of making poor decisions okay because you're out here acting like you know everything and you don't even know that your boyfriend's a stinky liar okay why won't he tell you what happened to his wife Jenna and she's like that's personal and he's like oh okay well then go ask him and see if he tells you the truth in the trance that Luca gets put into, he admits that the reason why him and his dad are working with Elijah is because they want to kill Klaus too, because Klaus has his sister. So he's using the sister as the witch that he needs for the ceremony stuff. And Eli or Luca's like, we have to save her. And Elijah promised us that if we help him, he'll save her for us. And Bonnie's like, okay, well, how is Elijah planning to kill Klaus? Because like, no, if I tell you, he'll kill me. But then she forces him and he lets it slip that basically the ritual has to be completed. And then when Klaus starts to turn, like that's when he's at his weakest and they can kill him. And Bonnie's like, when the ritual's completed, you mean that Elena and Luke is like, Elena has to die for everything to be completed for us to kill Klaus. Stefan goes outside of the cabin, Brady and Tyler attack him. Uh, Brady goes back inside the house to get Elena and then Tyler stays with Stefan like watching him. 
And Stefan's like, you have to help me. Like the bullet grazed my heart. I have to get it out. And St Tyler's like, don't move. And Stefan's like, why are you doing this? Like, don't you know what they're going to do to Elena once they have her? Like, don't you know why they want her? And Tyler's like, what are you talking about? Like, they didn't tell me any of that. And Stefan's like, yeah, dude, because they're lying to you. And he tells him about the fact that if they take Elena, they're going to kill her. Eddie gets into the house and kind of chases Elena around. He's really freaking creepy. He's like walking around like, I can smell you. I know you're in here because I can smell you. Creepy, creepy, creepy dog man. And she basically like ends up stabbing him. She ends up hiding from him. She does a really good job of like getting away from him. And then right at the last possible second when he's about to get her, Stefan interferes and kills Brady. And then we see that Tyler helps Stefan get out and Tyler apologizes to Elena and he's like, I'm so sorry. I didn't know what they were going to do to you. I had no idea. And Elena forgives him, which thank God, because he, he's been through it in this episode alone, guys. While the wolves are torturing Damon, Elijah shows up and he's like, here's the Moonstone wolves. Go ahead and take it. And then when they come to grab it, he just kills all of them except for Jules who gets away. And then he like rips through the chains that Damon's being held with like so easily. I love that about Elijah. He literally just like clink and just rips them off. And he's like, this is the third time I've saved your life. Freaking idiot. He doesn't say the freaking idiot part, but we know where he's thinking it. Once Rick wakes up, he calls Jenna and he's like, I'm so sorry. I fell asleep. I'm a jerk. Can we reschedule? And she's like, oh yeah, no problem. Like we can totally reschedule. But she's definitely got doubts now after what John said to her about how Rick's not a good guy, which is just annoying. Like they were doing so good. And now uh, once again, there's relationship drama between Rick and Jenna. Why can't they just be happy? Stefan goes to Elena and is like, look, I just talked to Bonnie and we just found out that Elijah's been lying to you. Like he's planning to kill you anyway for the ritual to happen. And Elena's like, yeah, I know. I've known the whole time uh, because Elijah is like really funny about his word choices. And he told me that if I did what he said, he would protect my friends and loved ones. He never said he would protect me. So I've known the whole time. Stefan freaks out. He's like, what? So you're going to be a martyr now? Like, this isn't heroic, Elena. It's tragic. You're just giving up your life. And she throws in his face that, like, he does that for her all the time. So it should be the same. And in her case, there's, like, 10 to 15 people, basically the whole town, that if she dies, will be saved. And Stefan's like, I don't accept this. I can't believe you kept this from me. I'm disappointed in you, Elena. Bonnie and Jeremy get into a little back and forth moment where they admit that they think each other are hot, but Bonnie's like, it can't happen. We can't be together. Elena will freak out. It's so weird that you're her little brother. This is so weird. And then Jeremy smooches her and you know, Bonnie and Jeremy are a thing now. So remember when I said long ago that I really liked one of Jeremy's girlfriends. It was Bonnie. I was talking about Bonnie the whole time. Tyler's mom is like walking through the Lockwood house and she finds a note from Tyler. We hard cut to Tyler saying goodbye to Matt at the grill. And he's basically like, I know you don't want to talk to me, but nothing happened with me and Caroline. Like I was going through something really bad. She helped me. I fell for her because she's awesome. How could anybody not fall for her? But she loves you and she deserves to be with you. Okay. And Matt's like, okay. And then Tyler leaves. Then we go to Caroline at her house. She like hears a knock at her door, but when she goes outside, nobody's there. But Tyler's there. He just wanted to see her one last time. Then Tyler gets into a car with Jules and we realize that he's gonna leave with her and go figure out how to be a wolf somewhere else. All right, so episode 15 opens with Elena reading the journals because remember her and Stefan found all of that family history. So she starts reading the Gilbert journals and she starts like uncovering some stuff about Stefan. There's basically just some flashbacks of like Jonathan remembering Stefan Salvatore coming back to town as a vampire and just like 
killing through the founding families, just not really caring who he kills, just killing all of them. Stefan is super aware of what she's probably gonna find while reading those. So he keeps like brutally watching her as she's reading the material, kind of waiting for her to get to that point. Damon is still super hung up on killing Elijah and figuring out a way to do that. But he's also like, I don't want anybody else to get hurt. So he's kind of in planning mode for the first time. Normally he just like does whatever he wants. But this time he's like, we need to figure out how to do this safely because I don't want anybody getting hurt. Which is good. That's a good way to think about things, Damon. Elijah talks to Jenna. She's like showing him around some like old property stuff because remember, Elena's mom was like the head of like the historical society and Jenna's like, lightly taken over that role. So she does a couple things. She doesn't know as much as her sister did, but she knows enough. So she's showing Elijah around and he basically explains like the founding families weren't really the founding families. Like the actual first people to live here were from Salem. Y'all remember when Grahams said that Bonnie's family came over from Salem? I'm just saying. But then Rick shows up and he ruins Elijah's story by being all weird and alpha over Jenna and Elijah kind of is a good sport about it. <laughs> I think this is the scene where he says like Rick is like leave Jenna alone and Elijah's like relax Rick I don't go for younger women and then he like laughs and he's like it was a joke Rick lighten up like <laughs> I love him so much I love Elijah <laughs> oh my god Luca confronts Jeremy and Bonnie about what they did to him because he's like, why did I talk to you and then just wake up in a bathroom stall? Like, I know you did something to me, but they won't tell him anything. And Jeremy also does a little alpha thing and he's like, get out of here, go away. She said she doesn't want to talk to you. So Luca has to leave. Elena and Stefan get into an argument over the whole Elijah thing again. She calls it a difference of opinion and he just flips out because he's like, I want to save your life and you want to sacrifice yourself. A difference of opinion? Are you kidding me? Then he kind of backs it up and is like, so you're reading the journals, huh? Find anything good? And she's like, yeah, I'm finding a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff that you didn't tell me, Stefan. So he decides that he wants to just go ahead and tell her his version of it. So they like close the journal and we get like some flashback overlaid with Stefan explaining. And basically it's it's kind of what we'd already started to piece together, but it's all becoming like more clear. Stefan, when he turned initially was like a holy terror of a vampire. So he was just killing people left and right. He was eating his way through the founding families. And then he was also like having all these women come to his rooms all the time and just like killing them for fun. Damon wanted to be smart and clever like Catherine. So he kept being like, you know, you can't do this. You're gonna get us in trouble. You're gonna get us caught. You're gonna get us killed. You need to behave. And Stefan was like, would you relax? We're just having fun. This is supposed to be fun, brother. And Damon's like, yeah, I'm not having a good time. This is the worst. And then he's like, I'm gonna leave because I can't trust you to keep us safe. So I'm just gonna leave you behind and go somewhere else. And then immediately Stefan is like, brother, brother, no, brother, I can change. Brother, please don't leave me. And Damon's like, no. Elena has the absolute nerve to be like, wow, it sounds like you were Damon. And Stefan's like, oh. I was worse. Damon's girlfriend, Andy, invites uh, Elijah, Jenna, and Rick to a dinner party that she's gonna host after Damon compels her to do so. Damon goes to the tomb and gives Catherine a fresh bottle of blood and a change of clothes as like a little bribe. And he's like, hey, I wanna know how to kill Elijah. And she's like, Damon, even if I knew how to do that, why would I do that? Because if you kill him, I'm stuck in here forever and I would like to leave. And Damon's like, okay. So like, even if I had like a dagger ash combo, would that work on him? And Catherine freaks out and she's like, Damon, please don't kill him. Please don't kill him. Please don't kill him. I don't want to be stuck in here forever. And Damon's like, oh my God, thank you for telling me what I needed to know, Catherine. Bye. But once again, Stefan and Catherine as vampires, very similar. They're so manipulative. Back to another Stefan flashback scene. We see him eating off the dying members of, I guess probably the Confederacy because of where they're at in Virginia. I think he's still in Virginia for this. They hadn't left yet. So yeah, he's eating like the sick people of the war. And then he sees a vampire 
and he goes after her and it's freaking Lexi. That's right, she's back. We get some Lexi time. She comes and goes as the seasons go on and I love whenever she pops up, it's so fun. So for this one, she pops up as like flashback to tell us how this is when she found Stefan. She started helping him. Um, she wanted to keep him from being a ripper and like teach him to control himself. She also says like, you're all the bad parts of being a vampire. Like you're overlooking all the good ones because you're just literally everything awful with this. You've become it. Jenna and Andy talk about the tension between Jenna and Rick. And Jenna's basically like, yeah, he's just not being honest with me. I don't know if I can trust him. And Andy's like, oh my gosh, that's so important with a relationship. I'm so glad that Damon tells me everything and we have no secrets, which she's not wrong. He compelled her to not be scared, but he has told her everything so far. So then Rick and Damon talk and they basically, Rick is like, um, no sneak attacks, no surprises. Like we have to be careful. And Damon's like, I know I've got this. The Ash dagger combo is going to work. Then John shows up for the dinner party, uninvited. Bonnie comes over to hang out with Jeremy, but he set the living room up with like candles and soft lighting. And she's like, oh my God, this is a date, Jeremy, no. And he's like, what are you talking about? We like each other, we kissed. Why can't we be together? Elena's not even here. And she's like, because I have to tell Elena first. I have to make sure she's okay with it before we go any farther. Are you crazy? And he's like, okay, we will just hang out and look at spells, whatever. But you did like it, right? The candles were kind of nice. And she's like, yeah, I did like it. It's really cute. They're really cute together. When Elijah shows up for dinner, he's like, if you try anything, Damon, I will kill you and everyone else Elena loves. Don't test me. And Damon's like, oh my God, I would never do that, Elijah. I'm not gonna do anything to hurt you. Show of hands. How many of us think Damon follows through with that? No one? Okay. At dinner, Elijah explains the witch burning. Uh, basically, you know, we don't, again, again, we don't get into the race of it all, but we can assume that Bonnie's family was people of color and probably a lot of the other witches were people of color. So they came to the town first, they founded the town and then the founding family showed up and we know, we can assume that they were mostly not people of color and then they rounded up the witches and burned them so that they could be the founding families. That's not good, that's so bad. And that's really the only time it's touched on in the show. That's, that's the town history I wanna know more about. I wanna get into the details of that. He tells us that story literally just so we know that he's looking for the site of the massacre but he won't tell us why. Elena finds research about the originals in the journals. She finds the white ash dagger situation and Stephanie immediately is like, okay, I have to tell you, I can't lie to you. Uh, we already know about that. And Damon is literally going to kill Elijah tonight. And Elena's like, what? And she keeps reading and then she realizes that the dagger has to be used by a human or the creature wielding it will also die. Jana gives Rick a hard time about the fact that she doesn't want to talk to him because he's being weird about Elijah because she thinks he's just being weird because Elijah's a dude and he's threatened. But really Rick is being weird because Elijah is a vampire and he should be scared. They should all be scared, but he can't tell Jenna that. So it just looks like he's being a jerk for no reason. And then John is like, also Rick, I may or may not have mentioned that you're a big fat liar. And now she knows about your wife. Ha ha. Stefan finally gets through to Rick and is able to tell him about the dagger. Damon starts teasing Elijah about the fact that he does actually probably know where the witch burial site is. And Elijah's like, do you think this is a game? And then before Damon can strike, Rick comes in with Andy and he's like, oh my God, ha ha, what's up? We forgot dessert guys. And then Andy's like, come on Elijah. And Elijah's like, ooh, I'll go with you. And he like twirls her around as they leave the room. It's giving like swinger energy to the party, which I'm not really about, but oh my God, Elijah is so hot. And then once they leave the room, Rick is like, Damon, and he writes down on a piece of paper, the dagger will kill you. 
idiot. Once again, he doesn't use the idiot line, but we're all thinking it. At the table, it's John and Damon and Andy and Elijah and Rick. Jenna is in the kitchen working on dessert. And basically John and Damon kind of confront Elijah and are like, can you just tell us what's going on? Cause we just want the full plan. And Elijah's like, look, you all need to trust me and relax because if you mess this up, I will take Elena away from you. It's a privilege that I'm letting her stay with you, okay? I will take her from you. And then um, Andy kind of starts talking to Elijah as like a diversion tactic. And she's like, uh, Rick, can you help me? I have something I wanna show Elijah, it's in my bag. And then John and Damon are talking to him and it gets kind of like loud in the room. And Andy goes over to her bag with Rick and she's like, you can't find what I'm looking for? Here, I'll get it, don't worry about it. So then she comes back to the table and she's like, Elijah, look, this is what I wanna show you. And he's like, oh, thank you, Andy. And then before anything else can be said, Rick just stabs Elijah through the back of the chair with the dagger. And he freaking dies. He kills Elijah. I was shocked the first time I saw this. And so was everyone else in the room. And then Rick is like, okay, great. Are we done now? Are we good? Can you guys clean this up before Jenna comes back? And Damon's like, yeah, bro, I got it. And Rick's like, great, thank you. Because he is this close pretty much at all times to having a mental breakdown. Like Rick is holding it together with two safety pins and a bottle of scotch. Stefan tells Elena that Elijah's dead and she's like, okay, awesome. And then she finishes reading to him from the book and she's like, yeah, so it's, it's crazy to me that like, you know, as long as a human wields the dagger, the original is dead as long as the dagger stays placed in their chest. Girl, that would have been good information to know. So yeah, you guessed it correctly. Damon goes flying through the house and Elijah is not where they left him. We cut to Elijah, very upset, going to Dr. Martin and being like, I need to find Elena right now. Bonnie and Jeremy get all cute and flirty and he's like, you could probably channel me, right? Because I'm mostly water. And she's like, oh yeah, that would maybe work. And they get all close and they're, they're like about to kiss. And then Dr. Martin just runs in and he knocks Jeremy out. And he's like, what did you do? You messed things up. I know you did something to my son. And she's like, I just found out what's going on. And I know why you guys are working with Elijah now. And we're gonna, we can help you save your, your daughter. And like, it'll be okay. And Mr. Dr. Martin's like, ah, and he like grabs her head and takes away her powers. You heard that correctly. He grabs her and he does a spell and he takes her powers away. Elijah shows up at the cabin to get Elena and he grabs a handful of rocks and he does my favorite trick, except this time, instead of breaking the windows, he literally takes a handful of rocks and shatters the wooden front door. Just like, boom, front door's gone. And he's like, Elena! Come out, come out wherever you are. I'll wait all night. I'm a very patient man, Elena. I'll just wait here for you. And Elena and Stefan are inside and Elena's like, I have to go talk to him. And Stefan's like, no, are you insane? And she's like, I have to talk to him. She goes to the front door and she's like, hi, Elijah. I'm so sorry. I did not know they were gonna do what they were gonna do. And he's like, Elena, come on. I'm taking you away. We're doing things my way from now on. Get out here. And she's like, no, no, no. I'm going to renegotiate the deal. And he's like, ah, with what, girly pop? What are you going to give me that I don't already have? And she pulls out a knife. And he's like, what are you doing? Stefan's not going to let you die. And she's like, you're right. He'll give me his blood. And then I'll kill myself again. And I'll turn into a vampire. And then you won't have a doppelganger, will you, Elijah? And he's just like, oh, I, I don't think you're going to do it. I'm calling your bluff. So Elena stabs herself and Elijah panics and he goes like flying at the door, but he can't get in. And he's like, come here, come let me heal you. And she's like, only after you give me your word. And he's like, okay, okay, okay. I won't kill your friends. I won't kill your friends. Okay, cool. Let me heal you. She agrees and like stumbles outside into his arms. And he's like, okay, I've got you. Like, it's okay. And before he can heal her, she freaking stabs him herself, homies. Are you joking? So then Elijah is dead again. And Elena's like, okay, it's dying because she stabbed herself in the stomach. So Stephanie 
husband comes out and like very quickly heals her and everyone's okay except for Elijah who has died twice in one episode. I'm not okay. Jenna confronts Rick about Isabel and she's like, what happened to your wife? I want you to tell me. And he's like, girl, I can't. But he also can't give her a reason. And she's like, so you're not being honest to me. Like that's what John said. John said, you're not being honest with me. Are you lying? Are you hiding things? And Rick admits that like, yeah, he is. So then they break up and it's so sad. They're both crying. It's really sad. Then John comes into the room and he's like, oh, that's so sad, Rick. I'm sorry. And Rick is like, screw you, John. Here's your ring back. After what you did to Damon, you're gonna need it. Because remember, John told Damon about the Dagger Ash situation, but he did not tell him that a human had to use it. So he was planning on Damon killing Elijah and Damon also dying. Um, when they bring Elijah's body to the house, Damon finds the moonstone on him and he calls it a bar of soap. And he's honestly so real for that because I don't think the stone that they used uh, for this is moonstone. I think it's actually selenite, um, which is like, you know, like the white, like people, normally it's like a stick but it can be carvings uh, because that's what this stone looks like. I hope I can find a picture of it for you, but if not, I'll just show you a piece of selenite and then I'll show you a piece of moonstone. This is the one that's in the show and that's not moonstone. So I know my crystals and I don't think that that's moonstone. I don't know what it is, but it's not moonstone. Elena's pretty sad about the ending of everything. And she's like, look, you guys want me to fight, but then you don't tell me everything beforehand. So how can I accurately make my own choices if you're hiding things from me? Like, if you guys want me to fight this, I will do it, but we have to do it my way from now on. And Damon does not want to agree, but they both agree to it in order to keep her from trying to off herself again. We get a final flashback scene of Lexi and Damon meeting for the first time. And Lexi's like, I'm here to help him. Like, are you the brother that like hates him so much? Like that hatred that you think you have under control is like gonna consume you one day. Like you don't have control over that. And Damon's like, yeah, whatever, just help my brother, okay? He really needs it. And Lexi's like, I will help him. Like I, I can do that. And then they part ways. So once again, Damon left Stefan because Stefan was uncontrollable and Damon wanted none of that because in the beginning, Damon was the good vampire. We cut to the present again and Damon's going to bed. So he goes into his room and the shower's running and he's like, Andy, what are you still doing here? I thought you left. And he rounds the corner and it's not Andy guys, it's freaking Catherine. The Airborne Toxic Events song, um, Happiness is Overrated starts playing and it is like the ultimate perfection of like song choice and visuals on screen. It's so good okay like truly so good so it's Catherine and she's just like hi Damon what's up I got out of the tomb <laughs> and she basically is like I knew if I begged you not to kill him that's exactly what you would do and then the compulsion broke and so now I'm out but I didn't leave Damon because I want to help you guys kill Klaus before school an undetermined number of days later, Stefan like fully jumps Elena. It is a very spicy scene for teenagers. And we cut to the bottom floor where Elena's like coming down the stairs like dressed for school and Damon attacks her and is like, what are you doing here? I told you to leave. And Elena's like, what do you mean? Like, you think I'm Catherine? Like, I I'm Elena, I'm not doing anything. What are you talking about? So then Stefan comes downstairs and sees Damon like choking Elena out and he's like, what are you doing? And they kind of mutually realize like, oh, Catherine's back. So Stefan goes flying upstairs to the Elena that he just made out with and he's like what the heck Catherine how could you do this I can't believe you did this to me you're disgusting and then Lena from downstairs shows up on the staircase and she's like <laughs> it's getting too easy being you Elena so that's terrifying when they straighten their hair they look exactly alike like oh my god this is so much easier when Catherine has curly hair Catherine swears that she's staying in town to help them kill Klaus because that will also benefit her. So she wants to work together to just get it all handled. Nobody really trusts her, but she seems to be telling the truth. Matt and Caroline have an awkward encounter at school where he's like, have you heard from Tyler? I think he said goodbye to me, but without saying goodbye and now I can't get up with him. And then Caroline's like, no, not really. He didn't say bye to me. I don't know where he went. 
and she's like, are we okay, Matt? Like, is, are we going to be okay? And he's like, I don't know, Caroline. I told you what I want. So you know all of that. So get it together or leave me alone. Which, you know, honestly, he's pretty real for that because it's kind of like what Rick is doing to Jenna. Like, it's just not good when the couples start hiding things from each other. It like almost never works out for anybody involved. Damon keeps trying to destroy Elijah's body. Like he keeps uh, lighting him on fire and stuff and it's not working. Like his body is like basically indestructible. So they're like, crap, we're not gonna be able to get the dagger out. So we can't use the dagger on Klaus, even though that would work on him too. So now we're just stuck with Elijah's body and a dagger in it and we can't do anything. And then Damon also gets Catherine to admit that like she knew, just like John knew, if he used the dagger ash combo, it would kill him. And he was like, why didn't you tell me that? Like, did you know about that? And when she admits it, it really hurts him. But basically Catherine is so manipulative that she just like gets him to let her stay anyway and like weasels her way back into his trust. Even though as far as like any form of like friendship or like being nice to each other goes, like he shut all of that down and he just treats her with like total contempt now. Rick wants to tell Jenna the truth so that they can be together and she can understand everything. And Elena agrees that they're getting to a time when he could do that. But she's like, I think it's more dangerous for her to know everything before Klaus is killed. Like we should wait until we handle all of this and then we can tell Jenna the truth. And Rick agrees. Stefan and Bonnie go to the Martins and are basically like, look, we killed Elijah and we know that screws up y'all's plan to get your daughter and sister back, but we're gonna do our best to help you do that anyway because we still wanna kill Klaus. So now we're gonna kill him without Elijah's help and we'll give her back to you. And Luca is like, okay, that could work. We could work with them. And Dr. Martin is like, no, we need to save Elijah. Like we're not gonna work with these guys. These guys are idiots. Dr. Martin does a spell on Luca to basically like astral project him into the Salvatore house so that he can find Elijah and pull the dagger out. So Catherine goes downstairs to get blood bags and she can like sense that something is going on and um she can't see anything though so like there's no physical signs of luca but she can like feel that somebody's like watching her and then she goes into the cellar and sees like an invisible hand like pulling the dagger out of elijah and it's like hard for luca to do it it doesn't come straight out it's not like he can just like yeet it out and take the dagger and run so he starts pulling it out and then she grabs onto it and pushes it down. And Luca can still talk to his dad. So he's like, Elena's here. And Elena's like, um, you know, holding it down. She's stronger than me. And Dr. Martin's like, oh, that's not Elena. That's Catherine. You need to get a stake. You need to kill her. Then you can get the dagger. So Luca lets go. And Catherine's like, whew, okay, that was weird. And then Luca like breaks a whole wooden crate and grabs a piece of wood and goes to stake her. And Catherine um, calls for Damon. Damon comes down. He sees Catherine stabbed on the floor. He's like, what the heck is going on? She's like, I don't know, but look at the dagger. Sure enough, the dagger's being lifted again. So Damon grabs the flamethrower and freaking just sprays it over Elijah. And in the room with Dr. Martin, Luca catches on fire. Dr. Martin like immediately drops the spell and grabs onto Luca and is like, oh my God, I'm so sorry, hold on. He starts trying to do a spell to take the burns away and heal him, but it doesn't work and Luca dies. The girls and Jenna, so Caroline, Bonnie, Elena, and Jenna go to the grill. Jenna runs into Rick and is basically like, leave me alone. I don't want anything to do with you, we're done. Caroline wants to be with Matt, but she's so scared of getting hurt and she doesn't know what to do. So she ends up getting up on stage and singing a song to Matt with the live band that's playing at the grill. And they have a whole moment where like she sings the song and then he jumps up on stage and kisses her and everybody's like, yay, Caroline and Matt, hooray. Stefan goes to um, the Martins to find out what kind of witch attack they were trying to do and finds Luca dead and then sees Dr. Martin and Dr. Martin's like, you took him from me, you killed him. Now you're about to find out how that feels. And then when he like stakes Dame or Stefan and Stefan falls down, Stefan sees a picture on the floor of Elena and we kind of put it together that Dr. Martin probably just did a tracking spell on Elena and now he knows where she is. So Elena is in danger. So Catherine tells Damon that John had given her a choice and she's like, Either I stayed and helped him fight Klaus, 
or he was going to kill Stefan. And he's like, just Stefan? And she's like, yeah, that's why I had to give you the dagger and ash and like let that plan go through because I was only allowed to save one of you and I picked Stefan. So it's just like another slap in Damon's face. Like she is just the worst. Bonnie and Elena are walking together and Bonnie just straight up springs, would it freak you out if I started dating your brother? Just like that. She just says it. And Elena is like, um, are you serious? And then Bonnie starts rambling and she's like, I know it's weird because like he was just your brother and now he's this guy that's like so strong and awesome and he's comforting me and he's my friend and I really like him and I won't do anything if you don't want me to, I promise. And Elena is like, you know what I think? I think that my brother has been through enough as it is and he's had horrible things happen to him and he deserves to be with somebody as awesome as you. So of course you have my blessing. So now Bonnie and Jeremy are gonna be able to like be officially a couple. Like I would love to know y'all's reaction to that information because I am fully biased because my best friend is literally marrying my brother a month after I get married this year. So like, I'm so excited about that. Like she's gonna be my sister for real. So with the Bonnie and Elena and Jeremy, I'm like, yay, that's awesome, that's the best. But I know most people, when I tell them that, they're like, are you okay with it? Like, how are you handling that? As if it's like a bad thing, but it's not, it's really awesome. So Stefan tries to warn Elena about the fact that Dr. Martin is hunting her now. And then Elena like steps out of earshot to answer his phone call to talk to him. Dr. Martin gets inside the grill in that time and like confronts Bonnie and is like, where's Elena? Tell me where she is. Bonnie won't give Elena up. So he just goes like absolutely feral. He starts like breaking bottles, exploding the lights. He lights the bar on fire because he's like, either you give me Elena or I kill everyone in here. And Bonnie can't fight back because remember, he took her powers. So it's just like free for all shit show going on in the grill. Um, Elena and Stefan end up back together. They go running into the bathroom to plan with Caroline. And Stefan's like, we know what we're gonna do. It's gonna be okay, we can figure this out. We cut to Caroline attacking Dr. Martin and Matt sees this happening and tries to like intervene, not realizing that like Caroline's a vampire and can kind of handle it. And then Dr. Martin uses the aneurysm spell on Caroline. And then when Matt tries to fight back, he takes a broken bottle and just freaking stabs Matt in the neck with it. So Matt is like, fully about to die. Dr. Martin runs away and Caroline stays with Matt and gives her his her blood to heal him. But then Matt is awake and conscious and sees everything happening. And he's like, what is going on? And he's terrified. At the Gilbert house, Bonnie and Jeremy talk. She's super upset about Luca dying. And Jeremy's basically just like, look, it was him or you. He used you first. We got the information back that we needed. And then he messed up and got himself killed with his dad. Like it's not on us. And before she can really unpack that with him, Elena and Stefan come home. And then Bonnie and Jeremy are like, we didn't check the house for it first. And Elena's like, oh, yikes. So she goes running upstairs. And as she's like washing her hands, Dr. Martin shows up and he attacks her in the bathroom. But surprise, it's not Elena, it's Catherine and she kills him. So Dr. Martin's dead, Luca's dead. Now the only one left is the sister that has been kidnapped by Klaus. Um, and then when everybody comes into the room, Bonnie is like, look, Catherine, you didn't have to kill him. And Catherine, very much the same way Jeremy was, is like, yeah, we did. Like, he was never going to stop. These people don't stop. Like, you either kill them or you get killed yourself. And then when Bonnie bends down to, like, close Dr. Martin's eyes, he pops up and grabs her and says something. And she's screaming her head off. And then Stefan just, like, snaps his neck and he's, like, fully dead after that. After all of this... Damon and Elena talk about how letting Catherine like with them and be on the team is stupid and they should not be doing it. Um, but it seems like Stefan likes her being with them and knows that she has more information that they need. So he's like kind of down to deal with her and just like let her be a part of it in order to get her information. Rick walks Jenna home and in his defense, he does a really good job of being like, look, my wife is dead. I can't tell you what happened. I'm just not allowed to tell you. And I'm sorry if that upsets you, but like, I do love you. And that is the most important thing. 
and Jenna's just like, mm, no, it's not. You still lied to me out of my house. And so she like dismisses him and he leaves. Jeremy tries to comfort Bonnie because he's like, the witch that could give you your powers back is dead. Like, what are we gonna do? How are you holding up? And Bonnie tells him, actually, when Dr. Martin grabbed her, he gave her powers back. And then he also told her that she is powerful enough to kill Klaus and he told her how to do it. So she has all the information she needs now. We find out that Catherine is the one that turned Emily Bennett in because we know that Emily Bennett died on the site of the witch burning massacre. And then Damon's like, it was you, wasn't it? Because no one else knew that Emily was a witch except for you, so you had to turn her in. And Catherine's like, well, yes, yeah, she was a loose thread. So like, I had to get rid of her. You know how I am. I'm always thinking of myself. Then she gets all flirty with Damon and she's like in her like, night clothes you know so she's basically in lingerie and she's all flirty with him and she's like you were so mean today Damon I love this mean dark side of you it's the best and he like acts like he's gonna kiss her and he's like Catherine there are so many other bedrooms in this house go find one and then he like throws her off and she's just like I cannot believe you don't want to sleep with me I'm hot and evil and he's just like I literally don't have time for you. Get out of my room. Matt wakes up and Caroline tries to explain everything to him, hoping that if she can just tell him, he'll listen and understand. But he just freaks out because Vicky told him that a vampire attacked her and he told Vicky she was crazy. So now he's like, oh my God, it was you, Caroline. You killed Vicky. Jenna and Elena are eating ice cream, decompressing from the crazy days they've had when there is a knock at the door and Jenna goes to get it. And wouldn't you know it, it's freaking Isabel. And she is the worst. Not only does she drop the bomb that Elena has met her before by being like, oh, Elena, it's good to see you again. So then Jenna's like, again. And then when they turn back to each other, Isabel's like, oh, you must be the woman who's dating my husband. Girl, you left him. You do not get to come back all jealous ex, okay? I literally don't have time for that. Jenna deserves better, but it really looks bad for Rick now, guys. And Jenna is pissed at everyone because everyone's been lying to her. So, okay, episode 17. Isabel's there. She's the worst. Jenna has a meltdown about everybody lying to her. She won't talk to Elena about any of it. Catherine doesn't want the boys to tell John and Isabel that she stayed in town and she basically pitches it as like, look, the less people that know I'm here, the better. Because if you want me to keep switching places with Elena, like nobody can know that I'm here. Okay, we have to keep that a secret. I'm on y'all's team. I don't want them thinking like I can work for both of you or anything. Jenna leaves and says that she's gonna go stay on campus. Rick is devastated. And then John is basically just like, this is a good thing though, because it's really dangerous for her to be here. So we should all be thinking of this as like a good thing that she's leaving. And then Rick just like, decks him in the face and makes John's nose bleed, which is so good. The team can't find Matt. He ran away from Caroline before she could compel him and he is missing. John invites Isabel inside the family house because she says she has info on Klaus. So her info ends up being like, I haven't found him yet, but I found people in his inner circle. And basically he's coming no matter what and because people know that Elena is alive and a doppelganger now, more groups of people are coming to get her. So she wants to take Elena to a safe house and like somewhere that only Isabel knows where they can keep her safe. And then John is like, I think that would be okay. And Elena's like, no, absolutely not. I am not going with her. Like, are you kidding me? She's crazy. Uh, Bonnie goes with Damon to help clean up Luca's body and she insists that like they take care of him and then also she wants to keep the grimoires that they've been um, accumulating because there's like dozens upon dozens of grimoires from like all these different families that Dr. Martin's been collecting and she's like we should preserve this knowledge and also somewhere in one of these journals is the spell I need to find Klaus and she does like a little location spell in the room to get the specific one that she needs to come to her so now she knows which one and then she also tells Damon um 
that she should be able to be powerful enough, especially if they can find the witch burning site. And he's like, actually, I know where that is because I know where Emily died because I tried to save her and Emily died at the location of the witch site. So I know where it is. We ain't no more than Klaus. Catherine goes to attack Isabel at the house she's staying in. And then very quickly, the fight devolves into hugging because they're friends. That's right, people. So Isabel basically tells us that she made a deal with one of Klaus's witches. And the deal was if she gives the Moonstone and Elena over to Klaus, Catherine will be able to go scot-free and live her life and never be hunted again. When Damon, Jeremy, and Bonnie go to the witch burning site, which is basically like an old manor house in the woods. Again, remember when I said there's a lot of stuff going on in the woods? I need to look and see if there's a map. I need to do that. Editing me, we need to do that, okay? Uh, but yeah, witch burning site is somewhere in the woods at a house. They go inside and then Damon's ring start, stops working. So he's still wearing his daylight ring, but the sun coming in through the window starts burning him and he just feels really bad and gross and like something's wrong. And Bonnie's like, yeah, it's because they don't want you here. Like you're a vampire. This is like a very sacred witch site. You need to leave. So he's like, cool. Okay, I, I'm the one who found it, but whatever, I'll just go outside. Catherine goes through the Salvatore house and finds the moonstone in Damon's soap dishes. Once again, he's so funny for hiding it there because it really does look like a weird, clear bar of soap. Isabel has the absolute nerve to go to Rick and be like, Rick, I'm so sorry that I was a jerk. I was a jealous ex, like I shouldn't have done that. Um, but I just, I had to apologize to you before what I'm about to do because like, I did love you, Rick. I loved you so much. And he's like, okay, what are you about to? And then the witches, Klaus's witches jump out and steal Rick. So Bonnie starts to work her spell to channel the witches and we can kind of hear them like whispering around her and there's like some music and like uh, vocalization sounds that start happening. And Jeremy's like, what's going on? What are they saying? And Bonnie's like, hold on. And they like wander through the house a little bit to a certain location. And then Bonnie's like, okay, okay, hold on, hold on. And Jeremy's like, what are they saying? What is it? And she's like, oh, nothing, nothing. They're, they're just, they're ready. That's what it is. They're just telling me they're ready. Elena goes to accept a check in her mom's name for the historical society. We cut to Isabel showing up to John, who's also at this event up on the top floor. And he's like, what are you doing here? What's going on? And she's like, oh, me? I'm just here to make a distraction. She freaking attacks John and throws him down the stairs. Don't worry, he's wearing his ring, but he goes tumbling down the staircase and lands at the bottom of the landing in the Lockwood house. And everybody watching Elena get the check is like, oh my God, John Gilbert just fell down the stairs. What's going on? And when the sheriff and Damon run over to him, he's like very clearly got a vampire bite on his neck. So the sheriff's like, whoa, everybody just back up. Just give him some air. He's fine, he'll be okay. And everybody does what she says, but like, oh my God, John's clearly not good. And then Catherine shows up to Elena and swaps places with her. So Stefan's leading Elena out of the house and he's like, it's okay, we'll get out of here. John's gonna be fine, he had the ring on. And then he realizes that he is talking to Catherine and not Elena and right as he realizes that and goes to like do something about it, she stabs him and then takes his car and leaves. Bonnie works the spell to channel the power of the witches and she's clearly in like intense pain. She's like screaming really loudly and there's a lot of like wind and lights flashing and stuff like that. And Jeremy tries to get to her, but she like blocks him out or the witches block him out. Either way, he can't get close enough to her to like stop the spell. And then all of a sudden she just stops screaming and he's able to get to her and he's like, are you okay? What happened? And she's like, no, I'm fine. I did it. Like I've, I've got the power now. We're all good. So John is dead, but like I said, he's wearing the ring, so he's okay. So then Damon sees the ring and is like, oh yeah. So this little ugly ring he's got on his finger, it's going to bring him back. Don't worry about it. And the mayor's wife and the sheriff are like, how do you know about that? And he's like, oh, it's like a family thing, you know? It, it'll be fine though, I'll handle it. You guys just say like he had an epileptic fit or like a seizure or something, but like he'll be fine in a couple hours, don't worry about it. 
when the sheriff leaves, calling off the false alarm about the vampires, Matt is there. So we've been missing Matt. Now he shows up and he's like, I want to see my sister's file, Sheriff, because I know about vampires and I want to see her file because I know you're covering it up. And the Sheriff is like, Matt, you don't understand what's going on. You need to cool it. And he's like, show me the file, Sheriff. And she like body slams him down onto the car. <laughs> Damon takes John home and dumps his body. Like he literally like walks in with him and he's carrying him over his shoulder and he just dumps him on the floor. And then he realizes that like he got John's blood on his hands and he's like, ugh, disgusting. So when he goes to wash his hands in his bathroom, he realizes the Moonstone soap is missing. Isabel calls Catherine and while she's talking to Catherine, we see Elena in the backseat of her car waking up. And Catherine's like, okay, so where are you? Like we're meeting back up, are we ready for this? And Isabel's like, yeah, actually, um, I'm really sorry, Catherine. You know, he wanted the moonstone and he wanted you and I had to do what I had to do. And Catherine's like, what are you talking about? And before she can like do anything, the witch that kidnapped Rick kidnaps her. Matt goes to see Caroline and he tells her, look, I'm scared, but I don't know who to talk to about this. And I want to know everything, okay? I need you to tell me the truth so that I can make up my own mind. And Caroline's like, absolutely, that's what you deserve. I will tell you all of it. Bonnie can now draw power from over 100 dead witches, and some of them are her ancestors, so that connection's even stronger. Jeremy is super concerned about the logistics of that much power, and Bonnie's like, don't worry about it, okay? They were just giving me a warning earlier and just letting me know that I need to be careful, but like, it's all gonna be good. Everything's fine. I'm so powerful now. I'll be able to protect us. So Isabel takes Elena to a cemetery and she shows her her own grave. So she's like, my parents put this grave here when they couldn't find my body because they just assumed I was dead. They come every year, blah, blah, blah. And she's like, you know, I wish you could have met that version of me. I wish you could have met the human me that wanted to meet her daughter one day because I think you would have liked her. And then she's like, but instead you're meeting this version of me, which is like all the bad parts of being a vampire. And you know, I meant what I said when I didn't want anything to do with you now. And I'm just sorry that I was such a disappointment to you. The witch that kidnapped Catherine calls Isabel and Isabel's like, yeah, I did everything. I've got Elena. And he's like, okay, awesome. Let Elena go. And she's like, let Elena go. Okay. And he's like, yep. You're all done. You've done everything he asked you to do. And she's like, oh my gosh, I'm done now. And he's like, yes, you're done now. And then they hang up. And then Isabel takes off her daylight necklace and burns alive right in front of Elena. Because like, that's not traumatizing, Isabel. That's definitely something she wanted to see. So Caroline tells Matt everything and she apologizes for having to lie to him, but she kind of explains it was like to keep him safe. And now that he knows, you know, they can be together and things can be different. And he's basically just like, no, actually I'm more alone than ever now. Like my sister's gone. My mom's never coming back. You're all lying to me. Like I'm all alone. I don't want to live this way, Caroline. Take my memories away. So he makes Caroline compel him to forget everything that he's learned. Jeremy looks further into Bonnie's new powers and realizes that in order to do the spell to kill Klaus, she will need all of her power and using all of her power will kill her. Bonnie already knew that. That's what the witches were warning her before about. So she's basically just like, Jeremy, you can't tell anybody. Like, we have to keep this a secret. This has to stay between me and you. I don't want Elena to know. She'll never let me do it if she knows. Matt leaves Caroline's house and gets immediately into a cop car where we see Liz waiting for him. And he explains that he did exactly as he was told. He got Caroline to tell him everything and then he made her believe that he'd been compelled to forget it all. And he's like, what is going on, Sheriff? I feel like she died. And the Sheriff starts crying and she's like, she did, Matt. Now tell me everything she told you. If you've seen the comment, Matt the Rat, that's where this is from. I had not seen that until I started working on these videos and now all my targeted stuff's coming out and I'm getting all of that, there is a whole, most people, I was gonna say there's a whole group, most people in the Vampire Diaries fandom do not like Matt. I was shocked. I was like, really? <laughs> of all the boys, Matt's the one 
that we're gonna hate but you know I don't like seven so I'm not judging any of you but I just thought it was funny that I had never known that before until working on these videos but yeah so Matt's a rat and he's been lying to Caroline John wakes up and he's like shocked that this has happened. He's like, look, I knew Catherine and Isabel were friends, but like I really didn't think they were working together because Isabel had me convinced that she was gonna help you. And I believed Isabel because like she was my first love and underneath all her like crazy vampireness, she's still that girl to me and she's your mom. So I was just hopeful, Elena, and I was wrong and I'm sorry. She tells him that he screws up everything that he freaking touches. He is just useless as all hell, but he's the only parent she has left, so maybe she can learn to not hate him. The boys talk about how Bonnie got her powers back, but Isabel and Catherine don't know that, which means that all the people connected to Klaus in their life don't know that, which means Bonnie is the secret weapon now. Catherine wakes up in a room with the same witch that kidnapped her performing a spell on Rick and when Rick wakes up it's not Rick and he immediately like goes at Catherine. He's just got like an entirely different energy about him and she realizes with absolute horror that it's Klaus. Somehow they have put Klaus's mind into Rick to keep Klaus's body safe. So from now on, it's going to get a little confusing. Just know that when I'm talking about Klaus, he looks like Rick, okay? So anytime if I say Rick's name on accident, I'm talking about Klaus in Rick's body, okay? That's what's happening right now. So basically, Klaus's plan is to keep his body safe by inhabiting Rick's body because Rick is also like in with everybody else. So he can kind of get information in Rick's body and like find things out that would be harder for him to find out if he was just being himself. Then when he goes to leave Catherine in the apartment, he gives her a knife and he's like, don't think I'm going to kill you easily. I'm going to make you suffer day by day because you ran from me for 500 years and you deserve to suffer for at least half that long. So then he tells her to stab herself in the leg over and over and over again until he comes back. The boys go ahead and give Elena the Salvatore house. They like literally give her the deed to the house so that they can build her like a safety zone mansion where she can like fully control who comes in and out because that was Isabel's plan. But this is their house, so this is already kind of safer. And we get a fun scene where once she does that, she like immediately lets Stefan inside and then she goes to like not let Damon in and he's like, what are we, 12? What are, we, what are you doing here? Let me back in my house, you annoying little human girl. She lets him back in, it's funny, it's a good time. The boys want Elena to stay in the house and then Elena and Bonnie are like, ah, no, Elena needs to go to school and Bonnie's the one that can kill Klaus on sight, so as long as Elena's with Bonnie, she's safe. Matt goes to the sheriff and tells her that he cannot keep lying to Caroline. She's going to be able to tell that something's wrong. And the sheriff is like, Matt, I just need a little bit more time because I need to like get everything organized and I don't know who to trust because now it turns out that the Salvatores are lying to me. So there's vampires everywhere and we're kind of screwed. And I need you to do this for me and keep it under control so that Caroline doesn't suspect anything. It's time for the 60s dance at school. We love to see it. So that's this episode's fun little event. So Klaus shows up to teach since Rick is a teacher and it's terrible. Like I don't know how immediately all of them don't know something's wrong because literally I guess they kind of like maybe they just assume Rick is like drunk or something, but like, damn, he doesn't normally show up to school drunk. So he just does not do a good job. He's like, oh, we're learning about the 60s. The 60s were so boring. Like nothing good happened in the 60s. And he's just like weird and like in no way does he even sort of act like Rick. And yet no one notices. Also, when he first walks in and he sees Elena in the classroom, he's like, and just creepily stares at her from the front of the room. Think when Ezra realizes that Ari is in the classroom with him. It is literally that scene, except in that moment, he said like, oh crap, and everyone noticed. Because Rick doesn't say anything, no one happens to see him just like death glare at Elena for several seconds, including Stefan. How does no one notice? 
Jeremy wants Bonnie to tell everybody what's going on with the spell, but she refuses. So he storms off. And then when Elena comes over, a girl from school comes up to them and is like, Elena, you're not going to believe it. The hottest guy ever just came up to me and he wanted me to ask you to save him the last dance. Isn't that so sweet? His name is Klaus. I know the name is kind of lame, but I promise he was really hot. And Elena and Bonnie are like, girl, is he in the room right now? And the girl can't remember. Like, she's like, I don't know, but I remember he was hot. And like, that's it. Damon immediately is like, well, this is fine. We'll just go to the dance and we'll kill him. But everybody else is like, Damon, we don't know what he looks like. And he's like, so what? We'll figure it out when we get there. We'll just like, let him go after Elena and then we'll kill him. Not safe. And Stefan agrees with that. So then Klaus comes home and it's Rick and everybody just gives Rick the plan. And then Bonnie even does like a little spell to show that she's got her powers back. So now Klaus knows everything. They just gave everything over to him because he's in Rick's body. So his plan, genius. This is one of the only plans so far that's been like really brilliant. The whole Elena stabbing uh, Elijah one, that one's pretty good too. But yeah, this one, this is a good plan. So Klaus basically freaks out and decides like, I'm just gonna have to kill Bonnie before she can kill me. Like that'll just have to be what I do. It's fine, I'll just kill the witch. And then his witch explains, look dude, I can put a spell on Rick's body to keep you a little bit more um, invulnerable to her attacks. And then you just provoke her repeatedly and the power will kill her because there's no way that she can wield all that power and not die. So she must already be planning to kill herself to kill you. So just go ahead and get her to do it early, no problem. So I have seen this show a shocking amount of times, and this is the first time that I realized not only are Caroline and Matt dressed as JFK and Jackie for uh, the 60s dance that they're going to, they're dressed as JFK and Jackie on the night of his freaking assassination. She is in the pink suit, people. I was... I was like, no, how did I never notice this before? It was shocking for me to, to realize that. I was like, that's a choice that y'all made. Y'all made that choice. Elena's super nervous about going into the dance, but just Stefan is like, it's gonna be okay. If we can just do this, then we can end Klaus for good and it'll all be over and everything will be fine. Jeremy is also freaking out and he tells Bonnie that he wants her to wear his ring so that she can for sure be safe that night. And she explains that the ring only works on humans against supernaturals. It won't protect her from anything to do with supernaturals because she's a witch. Um, Klaus has a student like go up on stage and say that the next song is from Klaus to Elena. Isn't that so sweet? And Elena is like very grossed out by it. And then Damon and Rick are standing together and Damon says to him like, ugh, I'm not impressed. Like this guy's lame. And Klaus is like so offended. He's like, ugh, you didn't think it was cool? Okay, yeah, I guess it was kind of lame. We play a song for her, like, damn. Like, all he wants is to be, like, patted on the back and clapped for for being a good villain, and it's so funny. <laughs> Lena can tell that Jeremy's really upset and something is clearly wrong, but he won't tell her what it is. So then she sends Stefan after him, and Jeremy ends up breaking and telling Stefan that Bonnie will die if she does the spell. So now everyone knows. So Stefan confronts Damon, pissed that he didn't tell him, and then Elena confronts Bonnie. And Bonnie is like, look, I have to do this for you. And I know for a fact that if this was reversed, you would do it for me, okay? Jeremy gets jumped in the hallway. And then when Stefan and Damon show up to help him, the kids are like armed with crossbows and stuff. So it gets really dicey for a second. And then they realize that it's probably just a distraction and something's wrong. So they go running after Elena. Well, Elena and Bonnie are standing outside and Rick comes running up and he's like, girls, girls, they've got Jeremy. Klaus took Jeremy. Klaus is in Rick's body. So then they go running into the hallway and they follow him because they think he's leading them to Jeremy. And then all of a sudden Elena's like, um, something's wrong. And Bonnie's like, where are you taking us? And he's like, ha ha ha, just a little farther. I had to get you away from that dance. And then it becomes obvious that it's Klaus in Rick's body and everybody's terrified. Bonnie starts attacking him and it isn't working. And then he kind of gives away the plan a little bit because he tells her, if you kill this body, I'll just pick a new one to inhabit. Kind of outing himself. You'd think he would have been like, oh no, Bonnie, don't kill me. Oh no. But 
but he just like totally tells them what's going on. And Bonnie immediately figures that out. And she's like, Damon, what do I do? I can't beat him because there's some kind of spell protecting Rick. So he's just trying to get me to use all my power and kill myself. I can't do that. And Damon's like, okay, okay. We have to figure this out because Klaus can't win. Bonnie, are you still willing to do whatever it takes to save Elena? And Bonnie's like, yes, yes I am. So then we cut to Bonnie going after Rick again, and she's like fully attacking him, throwing everything she can at him. Elena and Stefan, who both now know what Bonnie's trying to do, come running after her. She shuts the doors on them so they can't get into the room. I think it's like part of the cafeteria that they're in. They can't get into her. She's like destroying the room, destroying Rick. Like it's going really badly for him, but he's not dying. And then she like turns her head and like locks eyes with Elena through the glass door. And it's definitely a goodbye. And then she just like unleashes like a final blast of power and dies. Excuse me? Yeah, I we're all thinking the same thing. I know, absolutely ridiculous. So Bonnie's dead and Elena and Stefan, because she dies, the doors open and they come running in and Stefan's like, I can't do anything for her. She's already gone, Elena, I'm so sorry. Elena's sobbing hysterically, holding Bonnie's body. And then Damon shows up and he's like, okay, I'm gonna have to get deal with this, I guess. Like, I cannot believe she wasn't strong enough. This is ridiculous. And he's super annoyed. And Elena is like, don't talk about her like it's not Bonnie, okay? You have to be gentle with her. And Damon's like, Stefan, just get her out of here because I have to clean this up. So then he takes Bonnie, but he's like actually really gentle with her because we know that Damon lashes out when he's hurt. So he's upset that Bonnie's dead. So he picks her up and he takes her to his car while Stefan and Elena leave. And then Jeremy shows up next to Damon's car and he's like, what happened? What happened? I got your call. Where's Bonnie? What's going on? And Damon just like shuts the trunk and he's just like, oh, kid, we need to have a little talk. Don't make me watch that. I don't want to see him tell that to Jeremy. Don't worry. They hard cut away from it. Cut to the Salvatore house where Elena is just like absolutely wrecked over this whole situation. She's devastated. And Damon comes home and she starts yelling at him. She's like, I can't believe you. This is your fault. You don't even care that she's gone. And Damon is like, calm down and be quiet and listen to me. And then he starts like voice over telling us what's happening while we see Jeremy at the witch burning house, like lighting some candles, okay? So Damon explains that the only way Klaus was gonna stop his plan of killing Bonnie was to think that Bonnie was dead. So Bonnie did a spell where when she did that big show of like using all her power, she like faked her own death and they couldn't tell anybody because it needed to look real. So Elena needed to really be heartbroken. Anybody on Klaus's team needed to think that Bonnie Bennett was dead. So Damon took her body away and all of that. So then we see Bonnie with Jeremy in the house and like, yeah, she's gonna be okay. He's lighting the candles and like making her comfortable and all of this and they're just waiting for her to wake back up. Elena is like, oh my God, thank God. Okay, I understand, it's fine, that's fine. Stefan is like, Damon, I can't believe you didn't tell me. Like we could have done that together. I would have been okay with that. And Damon's like, yeah, I don't think you would have brother because you are never willing to do the hard stuff. You're never willing to make Elena mad at you if it will save her. And I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to do whatever it takes. And you don't understand that. We get a MiFi product placement at Bonnie's haunted house. She wakes up and Jeremy um, sets up the computer for her so that she can talk to Elena. They have a really sweet conversation where Elena's like, I forgive you, it's okay. And Bonnie explains that it just happened so quickly that there wasn't time to tell Stefan and Elena safely. So they just had to do it. And she's so sorry that she put Elena through that. And Elena's like, it's okay, it's okay, I understand. Elena goes to Damon and he expects her to like yell at him some more, but she actually ends up forgiving him and being like, I understand why you did what you did, but I'm telling you right now that Bonnie cannot die for me. So we have to figure out another way to do this so that everyone can live. Okay, we have to do it that way. And Damon's like, all right, we'll try to find a way, but I need you to know right now 
that I'm always going to pick you over anybody else. And it gets really intense for a second. And like, as she goes to move away, she gives like a weird side eye to his bed. It's a, it's a moment, something, something happens. It's a little weird, but something happens. So Elena leaves the room and show of hands, do you guys think she goes to bed? Or like literally anything but going down to the cellar and yeeting the knife out of Elijah and sitting beside him to wait for him to wake up. Hello? Oh, you didn't see that coming? End of episode. We get right into like a memory flashback for him of the first time he met Catherine when she was a human, of course. And it's very obvious that like from the jump, he was like smitten with her, like immediately he thought she was beautiful and was like totally into her. Back in the house with Elena, he starts to suffocate because he's not been invited in since she bought the deed to the house, so he can't be in the house. So he starts like trying to get away and like trying to like flash jump out of the house, but he keeps suffocating, so he keeps like getting stuck and not being able to get out fully. And he's like, Elena, you have to get me out of here. But like, she can't get him out any quicker. So he runs away. And by the time she gets upstairs, he's like standing on the other side of the threshold of the house, like knelt down, like trying to recover because he fully almost died like multiple times. <laughs> he wants to know what happened since he's been dead and like what even happened to like make them use the dagger on him and everything. And then he, she's like, okay, I'll tell you, but I can't tell you here because Stefan and Damon are still in the house. And he's like, well, then how do I know I can trust you? And she just like hands him over the dagger and he takes the dagger from her. And then she goes with him, y'all. She's, she's crazy. Like I, I am an Elijah girly and I do not trust him. I just do not, okay? But she does, so she goes with him. Andy Star, you know, Damon's girlfriend, in case you forgot, is over again. And Stefan kind of gives him a hard time about like using so much compulsion on Andy, but Andy doesn't seem to mind because Damon's compulsed her into not minding. So that's irrelevant how she feels about it. She doesn't know how she feels about it. Um, and then Stefan's like, oh, I thought Elena was with you. Where's Elena? And they can't find her. And then they realize that Elijah's body is also gone. So the boys enter full panic mode. Klaus sends his witch off to get his body. And then he tells Caroline that now that Bonnie's dead, he's got pretty much everything he needs for the ritual. You know, he has Elena, he has the moonstone. He just needs to get a vampire and a werewolf and he's all set. And he's like, also it has to happen here in Mystic Falls because this is like Elena's birthplace, which you would know if you wouldn't have run off from me before I could tell you everything about the sacrifice you big dumb dummy but that's why I did know where your birthplace was and that's why I killed your whole family <laughs> Elena and Elijah are in the car together and she like fully wants to work with him again Stefan calls and is like what are you doing are you with Elijah you can't trust him and she's like yes I can Elijah is a noble man and he's very honorable as long as and as long as I do what I say I'm gonna do he'll do what he says he's gonna do and it'll all be fine, you just have to trust me. And so then she hangs up and gives her phone over to Elijah and he kind of is like, yeah, as long as we can make this deal and you can listen to me for real this time, we'll make this work and we'll kill Klaus together and it'll all be over. Then we cut back to the boys and Damon is like, okay, well, we're gonna go get her, right? Like we're gonna get her away from Elijah again. And Stefan's like, no, we're not because that's not what she wants to do. And we have to listen to her and we have to trust that she knows what she's doing. So Damon wants to fight back on the whole Elena trusting Elijah thing, but Stefan is like, no, we promised we were gonna let her do this her way. We have to do that. We have to let her do what she wants. And Damon's just like, cool, okay, I'll back off. You protect her all on your own. I wouldn't wanna do anything stupid, brother, now would I? Elena tells Elijah about how Klaus has been using Rick's body and we get a flashback to Elijah back in that, you know, ball with Catherine waiting for Klaus to show up and then we get our first like visual of Klaus and obviously the actor is going to have shorter hair but when we see him this first way with his long hair he's very like He's very much like a lion to me, like he very cat-like. It's something about like the expressions in his eyes and like the way he holds his mouth. He like curls his mouth a certain way. And then he like always kind of looks like he could snatch you at any given time. You know, like when a cat's looking at you and you think it's gonna like 
give you affection and then it just like slaps the shit out of you like that's klaus like klaus is an angry house cat but with his long curly blonde hair he very much looks like angry scary lion boy so i don't know i hope that makes sense to those of you that have seen it because yeah he's very he's very cat coated to me uh, but we get to see him for the first time Elijah then takes Elena to the Lockwood house because he got the mayor's wife off Vervain. Her name is Carol, by the way. I should probably start calling her that instead of just the mayor's wife since the mayor's dead. Um, so Carol Lockwood is um, helping Elijah inadvertently because he got her off Vervain. So now he can use her house and like the things she has. So she helps him find some of the mayor's old clothing and then gets him all cleaned up and stuff. Jenna comes home and calls Stefan and she's like, where is everybody? Why won't anybody answer their phone? I have all these weird messages from Elena about like not talking to Rick, what's going on? And Stefan's like, okay, just stay right there. Stay right there. Don't do anything. Um, I'll come to you. I'll be there in just a second. And he runs off to help Jenna because they're all terrified that now that Jenna's back home, something bad's going to happen to her. <laughs> we get such a funny moment where Klaus explains that he doesn't think Catherine is going to... Um, be dead because he's like Klaus isn't gonna kill her Klaus is gonna like make her pay and you know speaking of that I also want to make her pay like I I'm mad at her for my own personal reasons and then Elena's kind of like you seem to know like a lot about Klaus and he's like well yeah Klaus and I are brothers yeah and then Elijah <laughs> Elena's looking at him the way you're all looking at me right now. And then Elijah just goes, I believe the term you're looking for is OMG. I just love him. So yeah, Klaus and Elijah are brothers. So that seems awesome. It seems like we don't have another set of brothers that have never been able to actually kill each other before. Oh. Damon and Andy go to Rick's apartment where Catherine is still being kept. And Andy can go inside, but Damon can't. He wants to talk to her a little bit about everything that's going on. And then he gives her a bottle of Vervain so that she can start taking it and fight Klaus's compulsion. Stefan gets to the house to save Jenna. Klaus is already inside. Danger, danger. Jenna knows something's wrong with Rick, but she can't figure out what it is. And she's just kind of confused because everybody was already lying to her. And now it seems like Rick is like scary demon guy but Stefan can't tell her what's going on so it's just a confusing mess at the Gilbert house. Elijah tells us that his parents had seven children so he has six other siblings so Klaus, Elijah and then there's four more and basically he's like we're the original family we're like the first vampires that were ever created and we're where all the other vampires come from and then when Elena goes to ask him more questions he seems to get kind of like not choked up, but it's just like clearly hard for him to talk about. And then he's immediately like, I need to go get some air. I'll be back in a second. He just leaves. <laughs> Klaus starts making dinner really creepily in the kitchen and he's using a really sharp knife and talking about how much he loves using really sharp knives. And Jenna's just like, I hate this. I want you to leave. And then Rick launches into explaining about vampires and how he's super obsessed with vampires. And he was keeping that from her, but now he wants to tell her everything. And he just tells her about the vampires and the werewolves and the Aztec curse and basically everything. Like he just info dumps all of this stuff onto her until she finally snaps and she's like, get out of my house. This is insane. I want you to leave. So Jenna tries to make Rick leave and then when he refuses, she goes to leave instead and she's like, screw you, I'll just go. And then he goes to attack her, so Stefan attacks him. And Jenna is like, what is going on? Don't hurt Rick. And Stefan's like, Jenna, just get out of the house. And he like turns on her because she's not listening to him and he shows her like his scary veiny eyes and he's like, get out of the house, Jenna. So she finally leaves and then he's there with Rick and he doesn't want to kill Rick's body. So he just like knocks him out and then he also goes after Jenna. So Elijah takes Elena on a walk around the Lockwood estate and he explains that, you know, regular vampires can be killed by wooden stakes, any wood. But his family, the OG originals, were only supposed to be killed by one specific white oak tree. His family, of course, didn't want that, so they went against the witch's um, wishes. <laughs> the witch's witches. Jesus. They go against them and burn the tree. So that's why there's just ash left over from that tree that needs to be dipped. The silver dagger needs to go into it, and then it can be used. I know, it's so complicated. But Elijah's like, yes, confirmation. That's the only way we can die. 
And then we learn, which is so interesting, Klaus is an artist. So he has been planting along with Elijah, all of these like fake cultural documents. So the Aztec drawings, Greek scrolls, like all these different things he's been planting across the world with Elijah to fake the sun and moon curse. And Elena's like, why would you guys do that? Like, if it's not real, what's the point? And he's like, well, we needed the moonstone for the actual curse on Klaus. So we just planted all of this across cultures so that the entire world's population of vampires and werewolves would be fighting each other and looking for these ingredients that we need, which is like kind of genius. So before Elijah can tell us what the curse on Klaus is, that's like actually worse than the sun and moon curse. Lena gets a call that Jenna now knows everything and she's like, Elijah, I have to go to her. She's my family. I have to make sure she's okay. I promise I'll come back. And because she gives her word and she's told the truth so far, Elijah's kind of like, that doesn't mean anything to me until you prove it. So I hope you come back. And she's like, I will, I swear I'll be right back. So she runs off to go see Jenna. We flash back to Elijah and Catherine playing tag in the woods. If you'll remember, she also used to play tag with Damon. So that's like a creepy thing she does with the boys she's toying with. So it's very clear that Elijah is falling for her pretty quickly. And she honestly seems to be kind of interested in him too especially because she's supposed to be there with Klaus. She's like staying at the estate to be with Klaus, but he's like always gone and he's not super interested in her because like romantically, he could care less. He literally just wants her for the ritual that they haven't told her about yet. Whereas Elijah is kind of actually falling for her because he's getting to know her and like taking the time to enjoy her company, which is something that Klaus is like not even bothered to do. So her and Elijah end up talking about love and relationships and she's like you know it's awesome that klaus is a wealthy lord and i'll be protected but i just thought i would have more and elijah's like oh do you have more with trevor which means she's already messing with trevor at this point and she's like no not really you know i feel like love should come from both sides and both people should be in love with each other for love to be real don't you think that's true and elijah's like oh i don't believe in love at all love isn't real like I don't believe in that. And Catherine's like, oh, that's horrible. Like, I absolutely can't go through life not believing in love. That would be terrible. What would be the point of being alive if we didn't believe in love? Girl, girl. So then Klaus shows up before Elijah can say anything and just like scoops Catherine up and takes her away. And he's covered in blood and they play it off as being like, oh, there was a bar fight last night. Like, haha. The, the noble that messed with me won't be messing with me again. And Elijah just watches Klaus take Catherine away and he's like pining. And Jenna ends up having like a little cry with Elena because she realizes that everyone knew and she's just mortified that it was just her that was kept in the dark. And then we kind of fade out of the living room and see Stefan listening from the doorway and he's also crying because he's just so sensitive. After that, Elena wants to go back to Elijah because she promised him she'd come back. And Stefan is kind of like, are you sure that's what you want to do? Like, I don't know if it's safe. And Elena insists that that's what needs to happen and that's what she's gonna have to do. So Stefan lets her go. Damon tries to step in and stop it from happening. But ultimately, Stefan ends up being like, we have to let her do what she wants. She wants to go, we have to let her go. Big stretch. He did a big stretch. Okay, sorry. So Catherine finds the booze at Rick's and starts having a little dance party with herself. And then um, Klaus comes home and very quickly like gets annoyed with her and uses compulsion on her to like make her sit down and be quiet. And then the witch comes home followed by like all his luggage. And then Greta, the missing Martin girl that's been um, talked about but we haven't seen her yet. And she seems really excited to see Klaus. She like walks into the room and she's like, hello, love, I missed you. Are you ready to get back into your normal body? And he's like, oh, you know it. Very creepy, hate that. Elena goes back to Elijah and he's super happy that she came home and kept her word. So now he kind of knows he can trust her for sure. So they go back to talking about his family and like the family history and stuff. 
Elijah explains that their father was a hard man and growing up he was always like kind of extra mean to Klaus and as they got older they realized why which was that Klaus's dad is not Elijah's father so his mom had an affair and um, Klaus is the youngest so it was like the last child is like not the father's child. So when the dad found out, he freaked out and went and killed the guy and the guy's entire bloodline. And he tells Elena that like that started a war that's like never ended between the species. And Elena's like, what are you talking about? And Elijah's like, oh, well, Klaus's dad is actually a werewolf. So Klaus is both a vampire and a werewolf, but that would make him too powerful. So the witches that were connected to the family that had helped them become vampires, um, like put away his werewolf side and made it so that he could only be a vampire. So the curse of the sun and moon is actually just Klaus's curse that he's been trying to break his whole life so that he could awaken his werewolf side and become both and be like a true hybrid between the species. And Elijah's like, we can't let that happen because as a vampire, Empire, he is bad enough. He cannot be both. Then we find out the truth, which is that um, when the doppelganger dies, when the doppelganger dies and the ritual is complete, Klaus will transform. He'll turn into a werewolf for his first time. And that will be his most vulnerable state because we know transitions like a really dangerous time for the werewolves. So that's when Elijah is planning on killing him. But he also says, I know how to keep you from dying. I figured out a way and y'all just wouldn't trust me long enough for me to tell you last time, you big dummies. Andy tries to get closer to Damon to help him and he like pushes her away and then he like immediately gets in a fight with Stefan about still wanting Elena and doesn't that annoy Stefan and doesn't he just want to fight him over it? Like Damon is so consistent about lashing out when he's hurt very big sibling of him okay like he does not know how to process his emotions so he just uses his younger sibling as a punching bag. Stefan says he could care less if Damon loves her too because Stefan has something that Damon will never have which is her respect and then they get into like a full-on snarling like bang, 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 match in the living room and it is not going good for either brother like it's very violent. When Elijah and Elena come in and have to stop them and be like, can y'all get it together? Um, Elijah has a flashback about fighting with Klaus and we get kind of confirmation that the brother relationships are very similar between the two pairs. And then Elijah basically says, you know, I will forget everything that happened. We can move on as planned with me protecting Elena and we can all be a part of the same team as long as you guys will apologize to me. Stefan immediately apologizes and is like, I was just, you know, doing what I thought was right. And this is the moment where if you've seen this audio on TikTok, he's like, I was protecting Elena. I will always protect Elena. And then Elijah's like, yes, I understand. I respect that. You got it. Damon is basically just like, <laughs> F you. I will not be saying thank you to anybody. I will not be apologizing. I will not collect go. I will be going straight to jail. Goodbye. And he just leaves the room. Stefan apologizes for him and he's like, he's just mad at me. He's taking it out on me. He'll get over it. And Elijah is like, mm, we'll see about that, which is just like so telling because it's kind of like in that moment, Stefan and Klaus are the same and Elijah and Damon are the same and Elijah doesn't plan on ever forgiving Klaus for what he did to him. Andy did not leave when uh, Damon told her to. So she's in his room waiting for him. And when he comes in, he's like, can you get out of here? Because I am like this close to snapping. And when I snap, I hurt people. And I told you to leave because I didn't want to hurt you. And she's like, Damon, you need to know people care about you. You need to know you're not alone in this. You need people around you that love you. And she doesn't really love him. So that doesn't work. And he just like lashes out again and attacks her. But then she starts crying and so he feels bad and he does the whole thing where he's like, oh my God, just leave before I hurt you again. I told you to leave. And it's a weird, 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 bad, terrible red flag way to show character growth, but it is the way they chose to do it, okay? Because Andy goes to leave and when she turns back to look at him, he's like crying on the floor because he realizes what he did to her and that it was wrong and that he doesn't want to do that anymore. But like he shouldn't have done it to begin with. I know it, you know it, we all know it. The witches do a spell back at Rick's apartment to put Klaus back in his body. So Rick like 
becomes himself again and sees Catherine and is like, Elena, and then passes out. And Catherine's like, <laughs> yikes. And then the coffin opens up and out steps Klaus. And it, it's incredible. So this is what he looks like in modern times. Remember how I said his hair was going to be shorter? So this is him. This is our baby boy Klaus. Um, I, okay. I love Klaus as a villain. He's probably, he's like one of my top three favorite villains of the show, but he is a villain. He is a villain. So even if later on I say anything else about him, those of you that know, you probably know the scene I'm talking about. Even if I say anything else about him, just know that I know in my heart this man is evil. Even though I know I'm gonna contradict myself. Anyway, next episode. So Elijah gives us a rundown of the ritual for the first time. So the witch that is working with Klaus must break the spell on the moonstone, releasing that spell. Then Klaus must kill a vampire and a werewolf. Then Klaus must drink the blood of the doppelganger, which in this case is Elena, and to the point of her death. But Elijah has an elixir that she can drink that will bring her back from death once she dies. So as long as she drinks that and then Klaus kills her, she'll be fine. Damon is like, I don't want to put any stock in some witchy woo woo potion juice. I think you just need to use the ring that runs in your family. Okay. Why is no one thinking we can use the ring? And you know, it's never really explained why that's a bad idea. But Stefan's basically like, we need to let Elena make her own choices. But up until this point, nobody's really talked about the fact that Klaus is a creature. So if she's wearing the ring and Klaus kills her, theoretically, she should come back. Cut to Carol calling Tyler and being like, Tyler, where are you? I don't know where you are, but I've had a terrible accident and I need you to come home and see me because I'm really hurt. Okay, bye. And then she hangs up and we see the witch that Klaus has been working with, not Greta, but the guy. I don't know his name. Micah? I, I don't know his name. Um... We see him and she's like, why did I just say that to him? And the guy is like, oh, because you had a terrible accident. And then he just witch powers her directly down the stairs. And she like smacks the crap out of the banister on her way down. Okay, like she totally broke some ribs. Um, but yeah, that happened to Carol. Not good. Lena explains to Elijah that she's willing to go through with the plan because it's her fault that her friends are in danger and that the town's in danger because if she wasn't the doppelganger, none of this would be happening. So basically, those revelations that she had like several episodes ago in the last part of the series um, they are standing true. And she just feels like if she doesn't sacrifice herself, what's the point? Because this was always supposed to be her life. So if she can save her friends with her death, that's worth it to her. Rick comes home, real Rick, and thankfully gets everybody to stop before Jenna kills him. And he's like, I don't know what happened. It's just like I woke up and three days have gone by. Klaus let me go. He told me to tell you guys that the sacrifice is happening tonight. So confirmation, it's happening tonight. In the hospital, Carol wakes up and she's really banged up, but she's okay. And then Tyler is there and she's like, I'm so glad you're here. Where have you been? And he's like, oh, it doesn't matter now. Now we're together again. I'm glad you're okay. So Caroline and Matt talk at the grill and he's doing like a decent job of getting her to believe that he's not lying to her. But then he goes directly to Liz and is just like, I can't do this anymore. This is so hard. Caroline's acting like Caroline. Like, are we sure she's evil? And Liz is like, oh yeah, the vampires are soulless killing machines. Like that's not Caroline. It's all an act. She's faking it. And Matt's like, I just don't know if I can do this anymore. I don't want to lie to her. And Liz is like, okay, well, I'm not ready to go after her yet because you know, she still looks like my daughter. And I understand why this is hard for you, Matt. I never should have asked for your help. It's okay. You can go ahead and be done with this. So she just dismisses Matt from the whole situation. So Elena tries to talk to Damon and he's just so petulant and annoyed that no one will listen to him and try to find another way to save her and she tries to explain what she explained to Elijah which is like this is her choice this is what she wants to do he needs to let her make her own decisions and Damon's like I just don't think I can do that because it's so unfair this is not what is best for you like you need to let me decide that 
they have a cute moment where they're like holding hands and he's like, I can't lose you. And she's like, you're not going to. Elijah's plan is going to work and I'm going to be fine. Okay. It's going to be okay. And then Damon snaps and is like, actually, I know of the perfect way to keep you safe. And he forces her to drink his blood, which means that when she dies in the ritual, she will wake up for sure, but she will wake up as a vampire. Stefan enters the room and is horrified by what Damon's done. And Damon's like, oh, don't act like you wouldn't have done that too. You're just upset because you didn't think of it sooner and you weren't willing to do it. So the boys get into like an all out brawl that only ends when Damon stabs Stefan in the stomach. I think with like part of his bed post, like he just yeets the bed apart and stabs Stefan. Rick shows up and gets involved and gets Damon out of the room and then they help Stefan. And all he can do is like apologize to Elena. Like he's so upset that this happened to her. And then we cut to Damon and Elijah. And Elijah is like, you just couldn't leave well enough alone, could you, you big freaking idiot? Because now the elixir that I have won't work. <laughs> Oh my god, he's so annoyed. And then um, Damon is like, what do you mean? And then he tells Damon that Elena will never forgive him. So he hopes that it was worth it because it's all over for him and Elena from now on. Elena can't grapple with the fact that uh, Damon did this to her and she's devastated. And Stefan like listens to her, but then like very quickly just turns the conversation to like them and their future together and how this actually makes some things easier, doesn't Elena? And she's so horrified that she's like, Stefan, now is not the time to think about me and you being together for all of eternity, okay? Um, Caroline runs into Tyler as he's leaving town again and he's like, yeah, my mom's okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and go. I need to go back to, you know, this place that I've been staying at where I'm not gonna tell you because I, I don't know if we can trust each other, ha ha ha. And then before she can be like, Tyler, like, get it together. Of course we're okay. Everything's fine. I'm glad, it's good to see you. Um, the witches attack and kidnap Caroline and Tyler. Get Rick and Damon bonding time at the bar, which is like some of my favorite stuff. And then Klaus shows up. Like, I am not joking. Klaus just like appears beside Damon and Rick and Damon are like, so you're Klaus, right? And Klaus is like, yes, I am. I just wanted to make sure that everything goes smoothly for the thing tonight, because if any of you guys screw it up, I will personally kill you. Don't make me do it. When he leaves, Rick is like, oh, Damon, you're going to screw it up, aren't you? And Damon's like, yep. And you're gonna help me, Rick, because we're best friends. Stefan takes Elena on a fun waterfall hike because he is trying to get her to open up about the fact that this has happened to her and how she's feeling and process her emotions. And it's just too much for her. So she's like, let's just walk the hill, okay? We'll just do the hike and I don't need to talk to you about anything else. Damon and Rick go to Rick's apartment to talk to Catherine and Damon's basically like tell me where the werewolf's being kept because we need to help you get out of this we're gonna kidnap the werewolf and then Klaus won't be able to do his ritual and Catherine's kind of like um I don't need to help you because I'm not the vampire that's gonna be killed it's actually Tyler and Caroline and Klaus already took them so I don't have to be involved anymore I'm not gonna help you and Damon's like oh okay well just so you know I gave Elena my blood so when she comes back, she's gonna be a vampire. So good luck fighting with her over Stefan for like the rest of eternity. That'll be super fun for you. Um, unless you wanna help me stop the ritual and save Elena from turning. Your choice, honey. And Catherine immediately is like, oh my God, they're in the tomb. Go get Tyler and Caroline, please. I don't want this to happen. Caroline and Tyler wake up in the tomb and she realizes what's going on and then has to explain in horrific detail everything that's gonna happen to her and Tyler. And Tyler's like, why did I come home? I knew it was a mistake. Elena and Stefan have like a pause on the hike and she's like, what's the best part of being a vampire? And it's the same old, same old, like your feelings are more intense. So joy is like epic. And then you love more intensely and blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, what are the bad parts besides the blood thing, you know? And Stefan's like, well, it's the flip side. So like sadness becomes despair, anger becomes rage. You can't control yourself bad all around. And Elena's like, okay, awesome. Let's keep walking. I don't want to talk about this anymore. Klaus comes to Catherine and uses compulsion on her to find out what she's been doing. He still has a sense that maybe she's lying to him somehow. So he takes her vervain bracelet and then makes her go stand in the sun. And Catherine may be crazy, 
but she is a badass. So she stands there in the sun while she's burning and doesn't move away from it until Klaus tells her she can. So she fakes good enough with the compulsion that he believes her and is like, awesome, I need your help with something. Damon goes after Tyler and Caroline and then the witch that's been guarding them attacks. He gets into a fight with Damon and then Matt shows up and shoots the witch. I bet you didn't see that coming because I certainly didn't and neither did Damon. So then Damon's like, okay, what are you doing here, buddy boy? And Matt tries to shoot him and, and he's like, oh, absolutely not. And he just knocks Matt out and leaves him there. And then um, he realizes that Matt has wooden bullets in his gun. So he's like, mm, this is weird. Lena and Stefan make it to the top of the mountain and he's like, look, you need to go ahead and just say the thing that you're thinking because we both need to hear it and it will be okay. I will be okay once you say it. And she's like, no, I can't. And then she goes on this big ramble about how, um, like she feels like she's been betrayed and she'll never get to make her own choices about growing up and growing older and having kids and staying with Stefan or not staying with Stefan. Like it's all been decided for her now. Stefan's like, I know. And I never brought it up as an option because I knew if it was one, you would have told me. So I know already it's okay. And Elena admits that she never wanted to be a vampire and she would never have chosen to be one, which is kind of, a lot because it means, to me at least, it means that she knew she was never gonna stay with Stefan forever. Or she was thinking like, maybe I will, but it'll be okay. But then she has that whole moment where she's like, what if I wanted to have kids in the future? So it's like, girl, have you been doing all of this to not think you were gonna stay with him forever? Like, I don't know how to feel about that. And I don't know how Stefan's handling it so well, honestly. Damon breaks Tyler and Caroline out of the tomb, but Tyler starts to turn. He's got a little bit more control over it now. So he's kind of like, it's okay, we can get out, but we need to hurry. We need to get me to my house so that I can lock myself up and then I'll be safe there. And I won't be able to get to any of you. When Stefan and Elena get home, Klaus is waiting for them. And Stefan tries to like fight back and tell her not to go. But Elena insists, she's like, I have to go with him willingly. Nobody needs to get hurt, it'll be okay. They say, I love you. And then she tells him to close his eyes so that he doesn't have to watch as Klaus like grabs her and takes her away. Stefan calls Damon immediately. And Damon's like, it's all good. I got Tyler and Caroline. They're out of there. No ritual to be had. And Stefan's like, no, you don't understand. He got Elena. Like Elena's gone. Klaus took her already. This is code red, brother. And Damon's like, Oh God, okay, I will take care of it. But what is he gonna do? Where is he gonna go? He doesn't know where they are. Tyler starts to turn at that exact moment, like perfect timing, wolf boy. So he starts snapping at um, Caroline and Damon and Matt's like, whoa, what do we do? And they're like, it's okay, it's gonna be fine. Damon gets like jumped on and Tyler's like snapping at him and all of this. And Damon's like, no, oh my God. And he throws him off. And then he's like, Caroline, take Matt and go that way. I'm going this way. We gotta split up. We'll meet back together in a little bit. Just get away from Tyler. So they all run off in multiple directions. And Tyler is just still turning into a wolf. Klaus goes to Catherine and opens up a laptop that shows who we can kind of assume is Jules. It's not like a super clear video, but it's like a blonde werewolf turning. So it's probably Jules. So he's got her somewhere locked up safe. And then Damon shows up and is like, I'd let go of your werewolf and your vampire. And now you can't do anything. Like now your ritual's over. Ha ha ha. You can go ahead and kill me. And Klaus is like, um, mm -mm, no, actually, did you think I wouldn't have a backup plan? You big dumb idiot. Look at this. I have jewels. I will be killing her. I have a backup. And Damon's like, oh, and I bet you have a backup vampire too, right? And Klaus is like, yes. And then he does something, it's such a weird shot, but he literally like shoots up out of the frame. So they're like face to face. And then all of a sudden Klaus just goes, huh, and like, I don't know if he like pounced on him, I don't know. But again, cat coded. Why would this motion be the motion to attack somebody? Why wouldn't you just go forward? Why would you go up and over? I, I don't know. Matt and Caroline barricade themselves in the Lockwood cellar to keep safe from Tyler. Um, he ends up breaking in anyway, but at least they're inside the cage, so he theoretically can't get to them. But Caroline is the one holding the cage closed, so he could bite her hands, and that could prove to be really problematic. 
Catherine wakes Damon up and is like, I'm so sorry. She made me call her. Like, I could not not do it because then he would know I wasn't under compulsion and then I would be in danger. But I am so sorry. I swear I didn't mean to. I would, didn't want to, blah, blah, blah. And Damon's like, what are you talking about, Catherine? Who did you call? What is going on? Cut to Elena in the woods with Greta, trying to get Greta to understand that like what she's doing with Klaus is wrong. But Greta is like full crazy witch mode and like does not care. She thinks Elena just needs to hush. And she basically is just like, you don't understand what we're doing. Um, it's not even your point to understand. Just don't worry about it. Then she turns on like witch fire so that Elena can see around her. And we see Jenna on the ground and Elena runs to her and she's like why is Jenna dead what happened I did everything he said like why would he kill her girl he didn't kill her then Jenna wakes up and we realize that Jenna is the replacement backup vampire we cut back to Damon who doesn't understand why Klaus even needed Jenna because he offered himself up as the replacement vampire. And Catherine's like, he wouldn't take you, Damon. He said you were as good as dead. And Damon's like, why would he think that? What do you mean? And Catherine's like, what is this? And like pulls up his sleeve and there's a freaking werewolf bite. <laughs> so Damon's been bitten, guys. Like, what? So when Tyler jumped on him earlier in the woods, he bit Damon, okay? And it, yeah, and Caroline kind of knew because like Tyler was like, nya, 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 and it made like a snapping sound. And then when like Damon threw him off, Caroline was like, Damon? And Damon was like, I'm fine, don't worry about it. So she kind of noticed because of course she did. Our type A queen notices everything. Um, but yeah, Damon's been bitten and there is no cure. So Damon's going to die. We're getting to the end, okay? Second to last episode, can you feel my energy getting crazier and crazier? I feel like by the time I get to the end of filming, it's been like four to five hours <laughs> and my brain is mush and I can't think anymore, but then I get so jazzed because the final two episodes are always like absolutely unhinged levels of insanity so guys get prepared okay here we go tyler is a wolf still attacking matt and caroline who are hiding in the cell he almost gets in and then matt is like absolutely not and he shoots tyler and caroline's like oh my god don't kill him he doesn't but he does wound him enough for them to get out of the cellar and into the house Catherine wants a final goodbye from Damon and has the audacity to ask him to not be mad at her before they say goodbye since he's dying. And he's like, girl, I don't know what you expect. Once again, you set all this up so that you're the one that gets out alive. Like Jenna's gonna die, I'm gonna die, Klaus is gonna die, and then you're gonna get off free with this and just get to go live your life. Enjoy an eternity alone, Catherine. Jenna starts going through transition and Elena tries to talk her through it and kind of explains what's going on a little bit. But then Greta shows up and forcibly separates them. She offers Jenna her blood and because Jenna's in transition, she can't refuse. So Jenna becomes a full vampire. Back to Jeremy and Bonnie who have apparently been in the haunted witch house this whole time frantically looking through the grimoires to find a spell that will keep Elena from turning into a vampire when she dies. Greta brings Jules to the circle of Jenna and Elena and Jules is like not a wolf yet and she can't figure out why and Greta says that she put a spell on her to slow down her transition so Jules's body is literally like trying to rip itself apart and Greta seems to like enjoy that she did that with her power. So this is kind of one of the first times we see like a true like dark witch who's like really using her magic for evil and is like really twisted. And I think it's a really cool comparison between her and Bonnie. So we'll get back to that later. But yeah, Greta, big, bad, evil, scary witch lady. Matt ends up admitting to Caroline that he's known everything the whole time. He was lying to her. And then he's like, yeah, your mom made me do it. Your mom hates you, by the way. She wants you dead. So Caroline's horrified. And Matt's just like, I don't know what to tell you, dude. Um, I don't know if I forgive you yet or not. I just want to get through this night alive. And then we can kind of go from there. And Caroline's like, yeah, fair enough. Tyler is rabid outside trying to kill us. So we can focus on that for now, I guess. 
John shows up at the Salvatore house because Elaine has been ignoring him for days and he's like what is going on what's happened and the boys kind of fill him in and John immediately is like Damon it's all your fault you're so terrible and awful and I hate you Damon I've never hated anyone as much as I hate you and Damon's just sort of like <laughs> wow the ritual begins Greta breaks the curse on the moonstone and Klaus just goes right over to Jules and rips her heart out it's very quick she does not suffer we cut to Bonnie and Jeremy. Um, Rick talks to Jeremy about what's going on with Jenna while Elijah and Stefan talk to Bonnie about what's going on. And Bonnie's like, okay, well, Elena can't lose Jenna. So I'll just go right now and I'll do the spell that I need to do to kill Klaus and it'll kill me, but it's fine. I don't mind. And Stefan's like, no, we don't want to change what needs to happen. We're just going to change the vampire by offering me to Klaus because he'll want me over Jenna. It'll be more heartbreaking for Elena, kind of. And then it'll be more fun for Klaus because of that. And like everybody's horrified, but Stefan's like very much just like, this is what has to happen. We're doing it this way. Jenna tells Elena that when they first told her, hey, your sister's dead, you're gonna have to take her children. Jenna was terrified and like almost said no because she was so afraid of failing them. And she's like, but now I failed you anyway and I'm so sorry. And Elena's like, no, I failed you, Jenna. This is all my fault. I can't believe this is happening to you. I'm so sorry. And she explains the whole like vampire turning off emotion thing. So she's like, you can do that. And then also you're stronger and faster than you think you are. So you could get away from Klaus when he comes for you. You just have to promise me that you're gonna at least try to fight and Jenna agrees. Elijah tells Stefan he's very honorable for doing what he's gonna do and Stefan's like yeah dude I hope you are and then he points out the thing we've all been thinking which is that Stefan has personally wanted to kill Damon multiple times and he's never been able to do it because Damon is his brother and Elijah is like I hear you I understand uh, but you know I had other family members I had parents and five other siblings and Klaus one by one hunted them down and took them from me. He dumped their bodies in the oceans so that I would never be able to find them again. I'm done with Klaus and I will be killing him, I promise. And Stefan is like, yeah, I bet you will, dude, that is rough. John brings the Gilbert journals over to Bonnie because he's pretty sure he knows the spell she's been looking for. So he joins the kind of Bonnie Jeremy collective team to find the spell to save Elena. Damon freaks out that Stefan is gonna give himself up and tries to frantically think of another way. There isn't another way. So Stefan just goes to Klaus before anybody can stop him and they start talking. So John's spell is basically based off a story where it's a little convoluted, but there was a mother and a baby and the baby was sick and the mother was looking for a way to save the baby. So basically the baby died and the mother offered her soul to like go through the baby and keep the baby alive and the baby lived. If that doesn't make sense to you, it doesn't make sense to Damon either. And he's like, I'm sorry, you'd like to hang Elena's life on a leap of freaking faith. I think not. And John is like, Damon, you're not understanding. Souls are like the part of like humans that die when they become vampires. So if Elena's soul remains intact, then she'll come back as a human and not a vampire. It's so dumb because once again, they try to make this argument that like vampires are soulless and evil. For the most part, vampires are not like that. So I don't really get it here either, but that's John's plan. Jenna listens in on um, Klaus and Stefan talking and realizes what they're trying to do. And Klaus won't agree to it because he's like, I kind of like the idea of like three women, three goddesses, which is just like typical and gross and just so him, but it's so icky the way he says it. Matt and Caroline have a talk about everything and he's kind of torn because he's like, on one hand, I'm really happy. I've loved being with you. This is awesome. But on the other hand, I lost my sister to this and as crappy and awful and scary as my life can be, it's nothing compared to this hell hole with all these supernatural creatures in it. So I kind of just wish I could have this life and just leave out all of this stuff, you know? I don't know if I agree, Matt, but I hear where you're coming from. You just really want to be normal. And, you know, we got to respect that about you if that's what you really want. 
Bonnie knocks Jeremy out so that he has to stay at the house and stay safe. John agrees to stay with him to watch over him. And then when Rick, Bonnie, and Damon try to leave with Elijah, Rick also gets stuck in the house. And Bonnie and Damon are kind of like, haha, sorry, Rick, we can't lose you either. You will have to stay inside. Back at the ritual, uh, Klaus initially is like, go ahead and pick, Elena, which one of them do you want to die? And Elena can't do it. So then Klaus is like, oh, you know, don't worry, there's not a choice. And he like, beats Stefan until Stefan's unconscious and he's like I need this one for something else so there was never an option to pick him then he goes after Jenna and this is like a truly terrible horrible awful terrible 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 scene it is the worst basically Greta brings the wall of fire down and then Jenna runs at Greta and tries to kill her but she's not quick enough and she only bites her and hurts her she doesn't die so then Klaus grabs Jenna and attacks her and Jenna and Elena end up looking at each other and Elena is like turn it off Jenna turn it off and you won't be scared you won't die scared it's okay so then Jenna like looks back up at Klaus and we kind of see like the emotions leave her face and then he freaking stabs her with a stake guys and Aunt Jenna dies so then Stefan wakes up and there's a piece of like steak still broken off in his chest so he can't fully heal but he sees that um, Jenna is dead and then he sees Elena and Elena's devastated and he's upset because it didn't work and he wasn't strong enough to stop everything. Like y'all remember when he was supposed to be microdosing with people blood so he could be stronger? What happened to that? Because there was none of that in this moment, okay? There was no superhuman Stefan strength to be seen. But yeah, basically Elena is just like devoid of all emotions except for rage. And then Klaus goes to get her because it's time for that part of the ritual. And then Stefan has to watch as Elena is drained until she dies. And then Klaus drops her and starts going through transition. So Klaus goes all freaky demon boy as he starts to transition for the first time. But then boom, Bonnie shows up and starts to attack him. And he's panicking because he's like, you were supposed to be dead. Why are you here? And she's just like, boom, witch power, boom, witch power, boom, 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 attacking him after attack. Damon sneaks up behind Greta and kills her so that she can't fight back against Bonnie. And then he grabs Elena and takes Elena to Stefan. And then Stefan is like, you two need to go ahead and get out of here. Like, I have to stay and handle this. Okay, but get Elena out. And Damon's like, okay, no problem. And he just runs with Elena. Bonnie's power is like raging all around them, making this crazy storm. And then Elijah shows up. And at first, Klaus is like, oh my God, Elijah, I'm so glad you're here. It's good to see you. And then Elijah just like plunges his hand into Klaus's chest and is like holding his heart in his hands and he's like this is for our family Klaus and before he can rip out the heart Klaus is like I didn't bury them at sea I have their bodies I'll take you to them you have my word you can see where this is going so then Stefan and Bonnie are like no don't you dare don't do it and Elijah's like did you promise me? And Klaus is like, I promise, brother. I'll take you to them. I promise. And then Elijah looks at Stefan and Bonnie and is like, I'm so sorry. And then he grabs Klaus and yeets him away. Like, I know, I know, okay? This is so painful as somebody who loves Elijah. It is so painful to see, okay? It's giving like when Isildur wouldn't throw the ring into the fire, okay? It's that level of just like, are you kidding me? We were this close. We were this close. But it's all over now. And they're gone. And Klaus is alive. Jeremy goes to the journals and asks John if he read the full story about the mother and the baby situation. And John's like, yes, I did. Here is the ring back. Please give it to Elena. Here is a letter also for Elena. And Jeremy's like, you got it, dude. I will give it to her. Damon brings Elena home, but she hasn't woken up yet. So they don't know if she's going to be human or vampire when she wakes up. And then he passes on the news that Jenna is dead. Rick is pretty devastated. Jeremy kind of just goes immediately into shock, but Rick is like really upset. So dead girlfriend counter for Rick. This is number two for him. All right. John appears behind them and then he walks outside to like look at the sky. And then as Elena wakes up and she's a human, John collapses and dies. So that's the truth of that story is that in order for Elena to live, John, as her parent, had to like give up his life for her. 
very sweet, but John is dead now, so. Tyler wakes up with Caroline and is like, man, I never should have come home. This is terrible. This is just absolutely crazy. Y'all live like this every freaking day? And she's like, oh, I know. It's been kind of wild. And he's like, Caroline, I tried to kill you for the second time. Like, this is not cool. And she's like, well, Tyler, no friendship is perfect. <laughs> And they just laugh it off and then they like cuddle on the couch because she starts crying. And at this point we know that like she doesn't hate him and he forgives her and they're working through their issues together. Um, so it's really cute. And like if only Tyler had never been a creep, then we could ship them happily. But it lurks over me that he's a creepy like essay boy that doesn't really mind being rough with women. I don't like that about him. And I don't want to ship him with Caroline now. And yet here we are, and they're so freaking cute. It's a problem. The end of this episode is a really lovely scene of like a funeral for John and Jenna, um, which is just so tragic on so many different levels because now they're the last two from that family. So Elena's dad's brother is dead and her mom's sister is dead. They're all dead. She's got no family left. <laughs> We even get a moment where Jeremy and Elena talk about how they're the only two left and they kind of have a sweet moment recognizing that and hugging each other. The letter from John is basically him just saying, you know, he's sorry that he wasn't a better parent while he had the time and that he wishes like things could have been different and he could have tried to let go of his prejudices and see things the way she saw them and like enjoy her and her friends, but that's not gonna happen now. So all he can hope is that by giving up his life for her and doing this last thing as a father, it can give her the chance to like have the life she wants and make the choices she wants. And, you know, he can, she can give the ring to her children one day and keep them safe and all of that. He also says he will always love her, whether she's a human or a vampire. It won't matter to him. She'll always be his daughter and he'll love her. We see everybody laying down roses on the graves, including an absolutely rickety wrecked Rick who is not handling things well. Damon doesn't want to go back to the house because he can't get over the fact that they need to kill Klaus and Elijah. And Stefan is like, we need to just be calm about it because I don't want Elena to lose anybody else to like a crazy plan. So we need to be careful. And Damon's like, yeah, I wouldn't make any promises about her not losing anybody else because surprise, I'm dying. And he shows off his bite. And Stefan's like, oh my God, okay, woo, we can fix this. I can fix this. I'll find a cure. It's okay. I'll do this for you. Um, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. We'll get this handled. And Damon's like, yeah, except we won't because there isn't a cure. So just don't tell Elena, okay? Because I don't want her knowing about this. I don't want her being upset about this. Just don't let her find out. That's all I need from you, okay? Peace. And he like struts off through the graves and the final shot is like him strutting through the graves as the sun sets. It's iconic. <laughs> last episode opens with um, Elena going into Jenna's room trying to kind of go through her stuff and then she panics and can't do it and shuts the door. She runs into Damon in the hallway and he's like that'll get easier you know but of course you know that already and she's like what do you want Damon like just cut to the chase. So he apologizes and he's like I know that I don't deserve your forgiveness but I really need it Elena. And she's like, you know what I need, Damon? Time, okay? I need time. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to forgive you or not. And Damon's like, okay, yeah, absolutely. Take all the time you need, even though he's dying and there is no time left. Damon goes home and has a drink and enjoys the sun on his face. And then he takes his ring off and he drops it on the floor and he starts to freaking barbecue himself. So Stefan comes home before he can combust into flames and is like, you don't get to do this. Oh my God, what are you thinking? And Damon's like, I get to do whatever I want, Stefan. There's no cure and you know how sick I'm gonna get. I can't let this happen. Like we're not, I just need to go. And Stefan's like, no, absolutely not. And he locks Damon in the cellar so that he can't hurt himself again. So Klaus wakes up naked in the woods and Elijah is like, yeah, it's been like two days since the full moon. So you killed so many people and you did not turn back out of a wolf form. And Klaus is like, wow, excellent. I remember everything. I can turn at will. That's so cool. I love this for me. And then Elijah's like, okay, you promised. Take me to the family. And Klaus is like, I did promise you that. 
even though you tried to kill me. Don't worry, brother. I'll take you to them so soon. We just have to do a couple things first. Come with me. And they saunter off together. Stefan calls Rick, who is drowning his sorrows at the grill, just absolutely getting hammered. And he's like, hello, I'm not good for anything except watching my girlfriend die on a fire altar. How are you? And Stefan's like, look, I hear you. I understand you're grieving. Damon has been bitten by a werewolf and code red. We need to help Damon. And Rick is like, yeah, absolutely, I'll be right there. And he just hangs up and goes to help. Elena takes Jeremy to the park to watch Gone with the Wind. That is, in fact, this episode's event. The town is doing a showing of Gone with the Wind. Caroline makes a joke about how it's fitting because they're just like Scarlet and they made it through the fire and now they're on the other side. Atlanta burned, but they're all alive. I mean, girl, a lot of people died in the last episode, but go ahead, make a joke. It's it's fine. Mm -hmm. Bonnie tries to contact the witches to get help for Damon. Um, her and Stefan go. And even though they don't want Stefan in the house, they respond better to him than Damon, which I think is an absolute joke because Damon is the one that tried to protect Emily Bennett and keep her family line alive. And Stefan is the ex-ripper who has killed like a countless number of people for fun. Anyway, um, Emily comes through Bonnie during this and is like, yeah, we know how to save him, but we're not going to tell you how. And then she hurts Bonnie to get Bonnie to like not try to use the channeling mechanism again. And Bonnie's like, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, dude. They're not going to tell us anything, but I did hear them say Klaus. I don't know what that means, but maybe Klaus has the cure. And Stefan's like, on it, I will figure it out. Carol goes to Liz and is basically like, get it into gear and kill these vampires before I replace you as sheriff because you're doing a terrible job protecting this town. So Liz is like, okay, no time like the present. I'm going to have to make a move. Stefan goes to get Elena from the movie night and is basically like, hey, Damon got bitten. Um, I know you're mad at him, but you should really go talk to him just in case we can't find a cure. If there's anything you need to say to him, you need to go and do it. And Elena's like, are you kidding me? I don't even get to stay mad at him for very long because now the idiot is dying. Like, okay, great. So she goes off to Damon and Stefan goes to Klaus to get the cure. Damon goes into like full fever mode and starts hallucinating memories between Catherine and Elena. And at one point he's having like a memory flash of Catherine, like clearly toying with him to get him to stay home when he was going to go off and fight in the war. And she even admits that like she's still seeing Stefan, but he shouldn't be jealous because she likes him too. She likes both of them. And that's not a crime. And then Elena comes into the memory and is like, Damon, can't you see that she's toying with you? Like, all you have to do is walk away from her. It was your choice all along to stay, even though she was lying to you. Just walk away, Damon, just walk away. And then he like wakes up and he's, you know, full fever, having a really hard time in the cell. Stefan goes to Catherine. She has been stuck in the cell for two days, waiting for the spell to break and not understanding why Klaus isn't dead. Before she can tell Stefan where Klaus is or isn't, Klaus just shows up at the house with Elijah. And Stefan's like, I need you to help me save Damon because they told me that you have a cure. And Klaus is like, oh my gosh, I'm happy to help your brother. But before I do that, I need to help my brother. And he like leaves the room. And then Elijah is like, I'm so sorry, Stefan. I hope you can understand. Like I did this for my family because I miss them. Like everything I've done has just been for them. And he promised he would take me to them. And before Stefan can say anything, Freaking Klaus comes back into the room and just stabs Elijah in the heart. He's like, yeah, brother, I did tell you I would reunite you with them. And then just stabs him. So freaking Elijah's dead again. And this time it's really upsetting because he's like angry. So he dies angry. And Klaus is just like, shh, oh, shh, it's okay, shh. Bitch, I've never been angrier in my life. So then Klaus and Stefan are alone with Catherine and Klaus basically starts playing with Stefan and he starts like stabbing him and stuff. And he's like, you know, I don't think that in this current like weekend state, you're gonna be much use to me at all. Um, but maybe we could make a deal if you were the vampire that you used to be, the one I've heard stories about. That's the vampire that I think I could make a deal with. 
Rick goes to Damon and brings him some booze and Damon kind of immediately starts trying to fight with him through the bars because he wants Rick to kill him. So he like teases him about his wife and all the bad things that Damon's done. And then finally he like grabs Rick through the bars and he's like, Rick, just kill me. And Rick is like, no, you prick and stabs him in the hand with a vervain needle. So Damon's like, oh no, oh, and he like passes back out. And as he's falling asleep again, he's like, Elena, which is so cute because Rick is like, Elena's not here, Damon, but Elena's pulling up outside. <laughs> so it's like he sensed her coming. So she's pulling up and then she gets out of the car and she feels like somebody's watching her. Surprise, surprise, it's freaking Liz, because as I said, there's no time like the present and she has made her move. So she grabs Elena and kidnaps her. And then she goes into the house and tries to attack Damon. And Rick is like, please don't go in there. You don't understand. You do not want to go in there. She goes in anyway and Damon escapes. The movie night kind of devolves because now Damon's on the loose so the team gets called in to look for Damon. The girls try to get Jeremy to stay behind and he's just like, I don't know what you think this is, but I'm involved now. So I will be looking for Damon too. You cannot stop me. So they all scatter to look for Damon and try to find Elena and Damon and keep them from each other and keep everybody safe. So Klaus basically wants Stefan to become a ripper again. He's like, if you can do that and prove to me that that's still you and you still have that inside of you, I could make a deal with that person. And Stefan's like, but I don't live my life like that anymore. And like Klaus is like, yeah, okay, cool. Catherine, come here. And Catherine comes over. He bites Catherine. She panics because now she has a werewolf bite. And then Klaus just like bites his own wrist and then makes her drink his blood and her bite heals. So Klaus is like, there you go. Now you know that I do in fact have a cure. It's my blood. Would you like to reconsider or is your brother's life not worth it? And Stefan's just like so torn because if he turns back into a ripper, he's like absolutely gonna lose everything he's worked for, lose Elena, all of that. But if he doesn't, then Damon's gonna die. Damon shows up at movie night looking for Elena. Thankfully, Jeremy finds him and Damon's doing okay. He's not like super cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs. So Jeremy's like, I got you, let's get you inside. And he takes him into the grill. The sheriff is keeping Elena locked up in her office and somebody comes running in and is like, Sheriff, Damon Salvatore was just seen going into the grill. So Elena's like, please, you have to let me help him. He's sick, you don't understand. And the sheriff is like, yeah, no, 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 keep her here. She runs off to the grill. Jeremy and Damon get inside. Jeremy like sets Damon up against the counter and then pulls out his phone and is like, yes, I got him. Everything's gonna be okay. Just somebody come help me get him so we can get him home. He like goes around. So Damon's here, Jeremy's here. He goes around Damon as he's talking on the phone. The sheriff comes in. She sees Damon, okay? So now she's seeing Damon and then she shoots the gun and Damon senses her and moves and she freaking shoots Jeremy. I wish I was kidding, but she just nails him right in the chest. It's horrific. Jeremy's a child, okay? I know he looks like a grown man, but it is so upsetting and the sheriff panics. She's like, oh my God, oh no, I didn't mean to do that. So she starts trying to help Jeremy, but it is too late because she got him right in the chest. And then Caroline and Bonnie show up and Caroline's like, mom, what did you do? What in the world? And Bonnie's like, oh my God, give him your blood, Caroline. But he's already gone, so we can't drink it. So then Bonnie's like, I know what I can do. We just have to take him, Rick, because Rick shows up and is upset. And Bonnie's like, Rick, help me carry him out and we'll just, we'll get him. I know where we need to go. And at first Liz is like, uh, you can't move him. This is a crime scene. I killed him, oh my God. And Caroline's like, mom, enough. You have to let her take him, it's fine. Also, remember just a second ago when I said Caroline gave him her blood? Yeah, her mom was still there. So her mom saw all that happen. But Caroline knows her mom knows she's a vampire now. So it's just a lot, a lot's happening in the grill right now. Lena breaks out of the office by throwing stuff through the window and breaking the glass. So she's free now. Klaus starts making Stefan drink blood bag after blood bag after blood bag to trigger his like ripper instincts and turn him into like the bloodthirsty vampire that he used to be. And Stefan does it while Catherine watches in like a weird mix of like horror and fascination. Like it's like she can't decide if she's turned on or not by watching him do this because she loves sweet, gentle Stefan, but she's never really seen crazy ripper Stefan before. So it's intriguing to her. 
Bonnie takes Jeremy to the witch house and is basically like, can you guys please help me save him? I know we can bring him back. Just please let me save him. And they're angry with her because they just told her to stop abusing the connection that she has to them and stop coming so often. And she's like, girls, I can't control when my life goes to absolute shit, okay? Please, Emily, just help me save him. And it like almost kills her. She's like bleeding, she's crying, she's screaming, but the spell does work and Jeremy wakes up, so he's okay. Damon finds Elena and at first everything is fine, but he keeps having those memory slips where he thinks she's Catherine and he thinks she's Elena and he thinks she's Catherine. So he slips into one where Catherine was like messing with him and was basically like, oh, you want my blood, Damon? Go ahead, you'll have to drink it yourself and then we can be together forever, okay? So Damon in his like fevered state sees Elena but he thinks he's looking at Catherine and she's like, whoa, Damon, don't bite me. Don't, don't bite me. I'm Elena. And he's like, but I have to, I have to drink your blood. That's the only way we can be together forever. And she's like, no, Damon. Oh my God, I'm Elena. Don't do it. And then he bites her anyway and it hurts her. So she starts freaking out and she's trying to push him off, but she can't get him off. And she's like, Damon, it's Elena. I'm Elena. You're killing me. I'm Elena. And he like snaps out of it. And it's just like, oh my God, Elena, I'm so sorry. And he like collapses. So it's very similar to what was happening with Rose, except it's like even more heartbreaking because now it's Damon. The sheriff and Caroline find out that Jeremy is alive and the sheriff is like, oh, thank God, I thought I killed him. And Caroline's like, no, mom, you did. You did kill him. And the sheriff is like, I don't understand what's going on. And Caroline launches into this adorable little mini monologue where she's like, you did once. I told you everything and you understood and you accepted me, but then I took your memories away because I was too afraid and I didn't want like to take that risk and have something go wrong, but I don't wanna be afraid anymore, mom. And I don't want you to be afraid of me. And then they hug and then Liz hugs her back and it's, oh, it's so emotional and sweet and they're both crying and it's so sweet. So now we have Mama Liz on our side. She is one of the good guys now. Jeremy calls Bonnie and is like, I feel a little different. I feel a little weird. And she's like, well, sweetie, you were dead. So that's probably normal. I think it's probably all going to be okay. And then they hang up and then Rick comes in and is like, hey, bud, I'm going to head out now. You good? And Jeremy's like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no problem. Go ahead and leave. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. And he looks all forlorn and sad. So Rick is like, how about I stay? I could stay. You want me to stay? And Jeremy's like, oh yeah, that would be great. Oh my God, absolutely. You go ahead and stay, Rick. That would be awesome. So it's real cute, but Rick's gonna be like pseudo dad for a little while. Elena cares for Damon. Um, how did she get him home and into bed by herself? No one knows. It doesn't matter. Um, but he keeps telling her to leave because he's like, I'm going to hurt you again. And she's like, no, I'm actually going to just stay until you die because I refuse to leave your side. Um, so everything's going to be fine. Okay. You're going to be fine. We're going to get this figured out. And Damon's like, it's really not going to end well, but okay, if you insist. He, he starts realizing that what she said in the little like memory flash was true. So like it was his choice. It was his choice to stay with Catherine. It was his choice to be angry with Stefan. And he's like, I just always made the wrong choices. And now this is what's happening to me. And I'm just really sorry. And she's just like, shh, and like holding him because he's covered in sweat and very fevered and very sick. It's not going well. He asks her to tell Stefan that he's sorry. And she says that she will. Stefan, meanwhile, has had an insane amount of blood bags and he is like fully feral at this point. So Klaus is like, awesome, dude, I can make a bet with you now and I will go ahead and give Catherine the cure. And Stefan's like, whoa, give Catherine the cure. And Klaus is like, haha, yes. He gives Catherine a bottle and he's like, go ahead and take this to Damon and then come back. And Catherine's like, you want me to leave? And Klaus is like, mm-hmm. And before he can say anything else, she like disappears. So then Stefan is like, no, oh my God, she won't come back. She's on Vervain. And Klaus is literally just like, oops. Very cute scene with Damon and Elena talking as he's dying. He's basically like, um, you know, I know that you love Stefan and I know it's always gonna be Stefan, but I love you too. And I just need to know that you know that. And Elena's like, I do, I know it's okay. And she curls up beside him. And then he's like, you should have met me in 1864. You would have really liked me, which she would have y'all. 
She, I want you to think about little sweet human Damon and tell me Elena wouldn't have been all about that. She'd have been like, that's who I want to have children with. That man right there. <sighs> anyway, um, Elena sits up and is like, I like you right now. I like you just the way you are, which is true, but it's because she sees the good in him. Okay. So then she gives him like a little kiss, just like a little sweet kiss. And he says, thank you. And she says, you're welcome. And then someone says, it's me you should be thanking since I'm the one with the cure. That's right. Catherine did come. It's Catherine. She's here. And she shows up and gives him the cure and is like, Elena, don't feel bad about loving both of them. You know, I did. And Damon's like, I can't believe you actually brought it to me. And she's like, well, I owed you. And now I don't anymore. So no more favors. I will not be helping you again. Do not think that this is going to change anything between us. I am out. I will be saving my own skin from here on out. Goodbye. Klaus locks Elijah up in a coffin with the rest of what we can assume is the family. Because there's like a little, it's like a big, um, almost like a wooden storage crate like think of those metal shipping containers but it's like all made of wood and then there's coffins in there and that's what he's keeping the bodies in as they travel and he tells Stefan um you know you're gonna help me find Catherine don't worry we'll handle her I'm not worried about it and Stefan's like what do you really want me to help you with and Klaus is like oh all of that will be told in due time don't worry about it you don't need to know yet First, I need you to prove to me that you're really serious about our deal because the blood bags were not enough. So Klaus brings out a girl who's like clearly terrified and he's like, I could have compelled her to behave, but a real ripper likes the hunt. And then he like sends the girl running down the storage container and Stefan just immediately attacks and kills her. So Ripper Stefan is here prepare yourselves. It's not fun, okay? Most of my hatred for Stefan comes from Ripper Stefan. Pretty much all of it, <laughs> okay? <laughs> so here we go. It's about to get real rough for the Stefan fans. Jeremy wakes up in bed in the middle of the night and he feels like somebody's in the house with him. He can like hear stuff. And he's like, Rick, Rick, is that you? Rick doesn't come. So he goes outside, he walks down the hallway. And as he passes the door to the bathroom, we see Vicky appear behind him in the doorway. You heard that right. Freaking Vicky Donovan, Matt's sister that died. So Jeremy goes down the stairs. He goes through the living room. He's so confused. He can't tell what's happening. Vicky is following him down the stairs and through the living room. He gets to the kitchen and then behind him, Vicky is like, dare. And he turns around and Vicky's gone. And he's like, what? And then as his back is turned, we see Anna appear. So then Anna's there. So then he turns around and he sees Anna and he's like, Anna. And then he turns around again and he sees Vicky. And he's like, Vicky. And they're just standing and he's in the middle and they're, and they're dead. And then that's it. That is the end of the episode. No, 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 but it is. That's the end. I hope you guys enjoyed. I know that that those last two, those last 30 seconds, a lot happens. Okay. Um, season three is a really fun season. So I can't wait to get into that with you guys. I do want to go ahead and tell you that I am going to do my best to be uploading weekly. Now, my goal is to upload every Friday. If a video is late, it might be later in the day Friday sometimes. Um, right now I'm shooting for like five, six o'clock, but I know a couple of them have gone out later than that. Um, they will be up for sure by the end of the weekend. So if it's not out on Friday, just know that it's coming either Saturday or Sunday. That's the plan for now. Um, I'm so thankful once again for everybody that subscribed and commented and liked these videos. I really appreciate it. And it's getting me just like even more excited each time I sit down to film because I love being able to talk about it with y'all and build this little community over here. It's just, ah, I feel so excited for what's to come. It's just, it's so exciting. If you did enjoy the video, please consider subscribing to the channel and giving it a like, maybe commenting down below your favorite or least favorite person or thing that happened. Um, I'd love to know you guys' thoughts. Also theories, anybody that's new watching the show, we haven't really talked about this yet, but let's try to keep like spoilers, spoilers out, or at least tag them down there so people know. But yeah, that does it for me, guys. I will hopefully, if everything works out, see you next week for another one. I hope you're doing so well, and I'll see you so soon. Bye. Mm -hmm.